So you can hear you now. Hmm? You can hear you. Hello, Shola. And good evening to to the prof. That's how you look it. Buy more credit from there yesterday or tomorrow. I can even call the FTA. Yes. Because I have my. How much do you buy? A time that I buy for 2500 That's six each. You buy for work or just personal use? Well, I don't know anything. I have to use it. It's only for work. But he comes to use it. Because uh, the 2500 is not a lot. Yes. It's not a lot. Okay. So it depends on what you're using this okay, for example. Okay. For well, like five thousand? Yes. Okay. All right. I can afford it. Even on my MTN, I have a postpaid of quite twenty thousand. 
the month. Yeah, my handset. Credit of twenty thousand every month. Almost twenty years. <laughs> Almost uh, as long as MTN has been on, twenty thousand every month. You pay for it in advance. Oh yes, no, I pay later. So our gang get by me when he show a jojo. He do not need she a talk on fire. Nigba ti and boy he a well less also. Ah, eh, ah, when your mouth pay, eh, when you show that you baby, only boy she get more shala ye. Oh, you know what? Oh, my back uh, one of our own that makes me so proud got married two weeks ago. She's an honor student at Yoruba Kobe Institute of Language and Culture. Please allow me these three minutes to honor this very honorable Omar Yoruba while we wait for other people to join us. You know why 
is unique and this is very, very important to me. Please forgive me. The reason is she is only the second semester at Yoruba Bode Institute of Language. But at the wedding, she sang in pure, unadulterated Yoruba language. Number one. Apart from that, she answered all the questions in Yoruba. That was Kudrat Adelonke Adeboye with her husband, Atoni Atlao, our favorite son. Abatunde Abdurrahman. You know, Ronke is a pharmacist, certified, licensed pharmacist, and she's always busy. She didn't speak Yoruba as a kid, but she's brought herself to Yoruba school where she started learning and she is really progressing. We always refer to her as all of all of people of my day. So she got married and she spoke Yoruba and she made me and you very, very proud. <laughs> So, on behalf of the Babuli Institute of Yoruba Language and Culture, and on behalf of all our fans that are proud to be Yoruba, that are proud to use this language, I'm taking this opportunity to congratulate you. Adeloke Omadeboye, Aya Babatunde, and Atomi Babatunde. And you know one important thing, they also wanted traditional marriage, and they had it by the grace of God together forever and ever. Amen. We are very, very proud of you, Adeloke. And we are very, very proud of the parents for encouraging her to be real Ojulowo Yaruba. So this is for all of you. Everybody, if you think your parents didn't have time to teach you Yoruba, because of that you don't like, you don't want to have time for the culture or for the language, so be it to that one at your palabra. I don't care, she that she made us proud, and that is why we're celebrating her win on your mobile for these few moments. Thank you. Uh, so we are back to where we are going now. I want to take the opportunity to thank everybody for your patience. We are here on Yoruba Uh My name is Shola Yusuf. Uh, Baba Deboye, you want to say something? Yes. Baba Deboye, yes. Yes, go ahead. She's not your daughter. I don't know you. Yes, yes, we are hearing you, Baba. Now, Oku 
Ashley, pe where are you going? Oru ko lo ise omo yin ni. Ah. Wo adebo e ti so mo mi. Especially the one that is being wear. Ah. Oh, I'm very proud of her. And I expect the husband to do the right thing by sending you money. Send me the worry. As soon as I got it on your behalf, Baba eh? Debo. I got it on your behalf. I got, <laughs> you got it on my behalf. Oh, you bitch, she. I just tell you, she no more to say. Ah, oh, okay. Oda. Uh, anyway, I want to congratulate her. Now, Adebo e ti won ni bo ni won ti wa. Adebo e from Abe Okuta, okay, Toku in Abe Okuta. In Abe Okuta. Eh, but girl, yeah. what ti lo? Ah, but Adebo e. Ah, Ben ti yiri. Eh, but Adebo e. Ti, ti ron ke oba ma. Fo be lo wa wa obi e kwe. O ma gba gan ni bo bo wa gba gan fa ya la wa. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, this um I'm, I'm i'm sorry we are we i have to do this because this work uh celebration i am very very proud of uh, Adirunke, uh for um not only adopting yoruba uh culture but the language and she's doing so well in uh yoruba Bode institute of uh, language and culture even though she's busy as a pharmacist she's always here um so we are going to move forward. We are going to progress. Um, good afternoon. Please forgive me for that little time that we spent. My Baba is here. And I'm very, very happy that everybody that planned to be here, they're here. Some people are still coming. But before I go straight to where we're supposed to be, I'm going to take this opportunity, first of all, to introduce our Amoye, the Amoye Yoruba Day. And uh, the first person that I'm going to introduce here is Baba Adipo Akinshiku. Um, welcome to this special edition of Yoruba Day. Uh, thank you very much, Oloki. There's something on the face of it hanging. What is that? Okay. Um, okay, no. apart from. Um, the next person that I'm going to introduce is Professor Adeniran Adeboye, uh, who is also a member of the Amoye Yoruba Bode. As a professor, I'm talking So about. now let's show in your face. Uh, please, everybody, please don't mute yourself. If I have to mute, I will mute everybody. Baba Adeboye, you are here. Uh, Baba is here, but I want people to know that you are here too. Okay. A cabo, a shoe. So, um, I'm going to introduce my other uh, an important part of Yoruba Bode, Baba Banji Ayiloge. Baba Baba Ayiloge uh, has been with us since we started this type of uh, Yoruba Bode, and is an excellent person like the other two that we had. Baba Yiloge, um, uh, okay. let's know that you are here, sir. Yes, I am present. Present, yes. sir. Present, man. God bless you. Uh, we are going, we try to speak English because we invited so many people who don't speak Yoruba. And Baba's, uh, um, uh, uh, as a guest is an opportunity, a real opportunity. So we want everybody to be able to enjoy this. So um, that is why we are doing this in English today. So we are going to be speaking English. But see, if anybody wants to speak Yoruba, we are not going to be against it. Anyway, I am going to before I introduce my Baba, there's one important thing that I want to do differently today. Um, today, the person who is going to introduce my Baba is somebody who know Baba more than me. Yoruba will say, Oma, Oma, Fedebi, Oya, Tosi, Oma, Ta, Fodubi. 
this person is actually Oma Fejebi for Baba. She knows Baba more than me. I try to be Oma Baba. Yes, I do my best, but uh, the truth is, I don't know Baba when they have been Bola as much as this person know Baba. Um, I'm going to introduce my dear sister. When I said Oma Baba, do we know the reason why she's my dear sister? So this sister that I'm talking about, she's of noble birth, but of humble attitude. I love her so much because of that. She's, uh, it took me a long time before I actually know that she's anatomy and we were friends, we were close. This is because of her humility. She, she is very, very humble. But she's also Yanifa Omatekun Babi Ekuniojo. I have the honor here to introduce my dear sister, Bere Awo. Bere is an important title in Yoruba. Bere is a lot of people, if you don't know, please get it today. Bere <coughs> is the first female child. And she's always in charge. And Bere Olabisi Anima Shang is in charge. Uh, I'm very, very happy to welcome you to this program. Um, my dear sister, Olabisi Mofo Yoke Abike Ayanima Shang Oma Bimbola. You are welcome to this program. So, good afternoon. <laughs> So my Baba is here, but my sister knows my Baba more than I do. So Bere Olabisi Anima Shang is going to be introducing our Baba who is going to talk to us today. Oh yeah? A castle. Kuka Lesa. I understand. Yes. I greet you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm very happy to be invited to talk about my father. Although um, I may seem just a little bit uh, um and th too over -enth enthusiastic because it's my esteemed dad and uh, he means all the world to me and uh, I thank Olodumari that uh, I have had the privilege of knowing him since the day I was born and uh, as I grow older I look back and see that it has been a privilege traveling this road of life with you, dad. So first and foremost, he's my dad. And then he's every other thing. <laughs> and I always tell him when we're talking on a lighter note, I will say, daddy, I would say, do you know that you have lived 10 people's lifetimes on this single solitary journey? Because um, the story of his life is a, a very, very interesting movie waiting <laughs> to, be, to be told. Um, well, my lenses may be just a little bit biased, but I know that I'm not bearing, uh, I'm telling the truth. His life has been a fairy tale to many people, uh, to most of us, because my father was born about 90 odd years in a hamlet called Abaunsa. And he has been a pioneer of many, many things. He's the first of so many, many things to do so many things, to um, achieve so many goals. And uh, I'm always ever so proud. 
to call him daddy. Um, he was born about uh, 90 years ago to Iroko, my grandfather, and uh, my grandmother. Uh, if I go in Sola or Doawo, shall go there. Yo. And uh, he went to school. His story of going to school is uh, also another first. No one had ever, ever been to school in, the, in Abaunsa. And uh, when my father went to school, he took many children with him, like the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Everyone went to school with him, although some of them didn't complete uh, primary school because it was for a period of like seven years that he trekked to school. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, he has had, he has regaled us with so many stories of uh, you, uh, how he went to school because uh, before my grandfather let him go to school, uh, my grandfather said that it is only lazy people that went to school because my great, great ancestors are in most of the Yoruba uh, history books about uh, telling about their, they were great hunters. So my grandfather thought that it was lazy people who went to school. Then my father went on a hunger strike and then they invited people and reminded my grandfather that when he was born, they, when they did the Babalawo cast his, uh, his entire, they told him, they told everybody, if I spoke and said that anything that he wants to do, they should let him do it. So that's when my grandfather agreed and he went to school and has never looked back. Um, he's a man of many, many dimensions. And I could talk for an entire week if you allow me. <laughs> but because of time, I'm going to um, shorten it. I remember there was a conference that we went to and somebody read my father's citation by the time he read it to the 36th page, you know, they told him, everybody started to laugh. I said, okay, that's enough. Because, uh, you know, you can go on and on and on. He was the first uh, PhD student. There were two PhD students at University of Lagos. He was one of them. Those were the first people to obtain PhD from the University of Lagos. And uh, <clears throat> he was the first Babalawo that I know of to become a PhD holder. And he has always, I remember when I was in a, a primary school in Nigeria, and anytime they wanted to, to do the parents teachers race, I would be so happy when my father my father would almost come possibly last or second to the last. But I was always very happy because I would see his billow in Agbada when um, <clears throat> the parents were doing the parents' race. And I was always ever so proud when I see him because I have never seen him in Western clothes. He has always worn our the clothes of our ancestors, our traditional Yoruba clothing. So, like I said, he was the first PhD student in, uh, in University of Lagos, the first person to go to school in Abaunsa and possibly 50 other hamlets in the neighborhood. And um, <clears throat> he, is a man of so many dimensions that I'm just going to, I, the few ones that I remember, like I said, first and foremost, he's a dad to all of us. And we, his children, love him very dearly. And we're so happy that uh, he's still here with us. 
and we are praying that he's going to be 150 years old or more because his, his mother died at over 100 years and his dad also. So he's going to have long life in the name Amen. of the Unumale. So <laughs> he's uh, also, um, he became the vice chancellor of University of Ife and he was a babalawo. And during the period that he was the vice chancellor, he was, he led with so much uh, sagacity and uh, good uh, character, which the Yorubas call Iwakwele, that almost the entire University of Ife became traditional uh, uh, worshippers. Many, many people, many notable people, even if they didn't become traditional worshippers, they they saw that he led by example and they gravitated towards uh, the religion because as we all know that all the other extraneous religions like uh, Islam and Christianity, I think Christianity vilified the traditional religion more so than Islam in many ways. So they saw another dimension to the religion. Because I remember when we went for the World Congress of Orisha tradition in Brazil, uh, I think that was 1982 or three. Um, we went with an entire plane full. I think it was one and a half airplanes, Varig, that came to take everybody. And we went to Brazil uh, to meet the other Orisha people there. I will also um, remember, I want to remember to mention that uh, my father, Ogunwande Shagoda Usi, Ifagbe Miadigo, Morawo, um, is the first one of the pioneers. I, to my knowledge, I would say he was the first person to actively take Africa to the new world. Although the um, uh, people from Cuba had been doing it, they tried their best, but most of the things that were lost during the passage when they came, our people were taken as slaves, slaves, most of the aspects of the religion that they lost, they improvised in a very colorful way too. Like if a babala was a king, falls down while he's divining, he has to make a ritual and so on. And uh, they decorated the shrine so very beautifully and so on. They have done their part, but uh, it's a good thing that uh, my father was one of the people who actively brought Africa back, especially uh, the Yoruba religion, Ifa and Dorisha religion. He has, uh, that is the way he has lived his life in the ways of our ancestors. He be, so when we went to Brazil, that was when it struck me that uh, the Yoruba religion, that was the first time it struck me how important all these things that my father had been teaching us, but he never forced any one of us to do any religion. He, he just taught us in the ways that uh, of what we were supposed to know. And when we grew up, we just took the baton automatically. So um, Brazil is not the only uh, place. There's Cuba. If you go to Cuba and you get to the airport and you shout, one day I've been bola, everybody knows <laughs> who that is. <laughs> or you go to Trinidad and Tobago, you travel to, um, there are so Spain, um, so many, many places. So 
um, all over the world. The Vatican, has been, the Yoruba religion has been recognized by the Vatican. And uh, you know, my father goes often back and forth to the Vatican you know, to talk about the Yoruba religion and our way of life. So there has been so many uh, works that my father has done in perpetuating and uh, making sure that the religion of our forefathers is not forgotten. He's also the first um, Babala to become a senator, a Senate majority leader. And he's such a very, very modest man. He's not, uh, you could never tell he's so understated. And uh, until he talks, you wouldn't know that he's an embodiment of wisdom that uh, Orumela has given him. So he's just someone who is so understated and doesn't uh, talk about himself, that, you know, doesn't talk about his achievements. But we, his children, are so proud. And I always tell him, I say, Daddy, I say, you know, you made all of us uh, go to school and we are so educated. So anytime we have a family meeting, we try to have a family meeting with him like every two weeks because we are strewn all over the United States in different locations. So anytime we start a family meeting and we are not able to reach a conclusion, I will tell him, I will say, Daddy, you know, book is too much in this family. There are some <laughs> of your children who have two PhDs and so on. So we can never ever reach a conclusion immediately. Mm -hmm. We have to analyze it first. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, I do not want to be verbose and I don't want to take time. Uh, am I still in order, Sister Shola? Can I continue or is this enough? Because I can go on <laughs> and on. Bye and bye I do, not, <laughs> I do bye not want to take the space. Um. My father, Ogunwande Shagoda Usi, in fact, with me. Um, well, Senate, he, and he has taught in almost all the Ivy League universities in United the United States. 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 He has taught at uh, Amherst College, Colgate University, Boston University, Harvard. I mean, just to name a few. That's why I always tell him that he has lived 10 people's lifetimes in this one single solitary journey. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, let me see, what else did I jot down? Uh, also in the family life, in his family life, uh, family life is so diverse. I think also that is why, one of the reasons why all his children, all of us, I'm the oldest of all of the children and it's uh, 16 of us. And, uh, you know, we are, everybody is a, uh, it's like a little nation. It's such a wonderful uh, experience to be a part of the Abimbola family. And uh, I think that I'm going to stop on this note because I don't want to keep rambling on and on. <laughs> I could take a few hours just talking about the Abimbola's. Thank but, you. Uh, you know, I hope I was able to touch a little bit on everything. Da, 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 <laughs> da. Thank you so much. Baba one day, ma, wole, ma, la, ba. I wish I would go up by it. I wrote Leo, no, me, la. 
Ma wole ma ra ba 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 la bi si ba ba roko oni wa nu ara re o si ma le amo po korobiti korobiti amo po korobiti korobiti ajaga ashe amo po rosha po ba ja o po kan dudu amo riri pete ti ma sha wami keke mi ta di dun a sha le di di enya e je kin ti ba ni ma ki ba ba lo ibe ni awa ba ba we am very, very happy that you are able to be with us again today. Anytime Baba has a little time to be with us, I'm always over excited. Um, and we didn't, we never had this opportunity. Bere, I'm very, very grateful. Because usually I don't know how to introduce Baba. I just introduce Baba based on what he told me when we are just like chatting or what I read in the book. And it's not all. This is a golden opportunity that we are able to know him more. <clears throat> My dear sister, I'm very, very grateful. I'm taking this opportunity for everybody listening or watching us all over the world. Our guest today is Awishe Bogboa Gbaye Aroleo Romila Baba Wo Ojogban Ogun Wande Abimbola Timofi Tawatawa Darukoma. Baba, welcome, sir. Now, the thing that Baba is going to do for us today is big. It's not a joke. That's why I, in my promo, I told you bring your children because today is very, very special. We are going to learn something very, very important and it may affect, it's actually going to affect our life moving forward as a Yoruba. So what is the topic? The topic is Olorun Olodumare. Baba, once again, the microphone is yours. Kepe. So, so today, Simelo Nino. Nde baba go me gbana gbana mo ni baba go me gbana gbana baba go me biti gun oni sago ni koso baba ye ni esu afi san pana o ko mama so sa ti gbe igi doru won ru won afi la to pa O la to pa o o re be ni O ya ni le o ni ra Ba mi se O le O ron me la A a nyan e e da o Ba mi se O ni le O ni a to to A le le Ah, a toto, a le le o. Nje bi o du, bo ba ro, e ye o ko, e ba ke o. Ke ye, ke ye o ba ke ba, e ye, e ba ke ba. A ada o ke, ene se kata, koto, ene bo bo e ye o ko, vinda ke mwe. Ah, I've been asked to talk about the high God, Olorun Oludumari in Yoruba belief. You know there is a book with that title written by a famous Yoruba scholar, Professor Idowu of late memory. But the book is written with a slant toward uh, Christian belief. In that way, what I like to say is that the anthropologists have not found any people anywhere on this planet who do not believe in one God. So all the things that Christians say to deride traditions of indigenous people 
all those things are false. The only religion that we know that doesn't have a concrete idea of one God is Buddhism. And it happens to be the most popular re religion in the world. Christianity is not the most popular religion. Islam is not. How could it be? All the 1.3 billion people of India, less than 10% of them are Muslim. Maybe 1% of them are Christian. All of them follow the indigenous beliefs of their ancestors. All the 1.4, 1.5 billion people of uh, China, the Christians among them, maybe like two or three percent. I mean, Muslims, the Christians are even less. So when you add India to China, you already have like 2.6 or 2.7 billion people. And you add Korea to that, and you add Japan to that, you are talking in terms of like three, a little more than three billion people on the face of this earth who are not Christian or Muslim. So I used to ask people when they say, oh, Nigeria, uh, you have a population of 46% uh, Muslim, 45% uh, Christian, or oh, the others are um, people who worship the animists or something like that. Where do they find all these figures? <laughs> all these figures are false. In Yoruba land, All those 50% that they are talking about who are Muslim, more than 45% of them still practice aspects of the belief, beliefs of their ancestors. The same for the Christians. Our religion, the religion of the Yoruba is an important way of life. Uh, recent research by scholars has shown that Yoruba religion is probably the fastest growing religion in the entire world. So we have a concrete idea of a high God who we call Oludumari or alone. And there are two heavens in Yoruba belief. Heaven above and heaven below, underneath, inside the earth, where all the ancestors are. My father is there, my mother is there. We have not seen anybody whose ancestor is buried in the sky. They are all inside the earth's crust. Oludumari lives in heaven above, also lives in that second heaven inside the earth. Like all kings and emperors do. In this country, the president of America lives in the White House in Washington, but occasionally goes to Camp David. The Pope lives in the Vatican in Italy, but he also lives in Lariano Bellitri, to which they have invited me more than once or twice, both to the Vatican and to Lariano Bellitri. So that's the same thing. Uludumari lives up in the sky, but also lives inside the earth's crust. Up in the sky, he lives with 
cabbage is shall go. When we mention shall go's name, we stand up and sit down again. It's only Shago who lives with him in the sky. And then he manifests himself, that is, Shago manifests himself in the form of uh, thunder and lightning. So who is this Uludumari that we are talking about? We don't have any temples of Uludumari in Yoruba land. All the Orishas have their own temples. They have their own colors. They have their own beads. They have their own type of dresses. They have their own chants. Uludumari doesn't have uh, a scripture of his own that we chant from. He doesn't have um, any of those things that all the Orishas have. But no Orisha is as big as Oludumari is the, without, you can't even imagine how vast Oludumari is. So we, Worship Oludumari, but not directly. We worship Oludumari through the Orishas. There are 400 plus one Orisha. We don't call them gods. We call them divinities. If you want to translate Orisha to English, you don't say uh, a lesser God or God or anything. We call them divinities. Oludumari, for want of a better term in English, we can call him a high God. The Yoruba high God uh, the Yoruba high God is very, very benevolent. But he acts through a share. A share is the power, the utterance with which he created the heavens with which he created the earth. But he does not do everything by himself like the Christian God or the Muslim Allah does. For example, he doesn't divine. He doesn't divine. So when he wants to divine, he calls on Ifa, and Ifa goes to meet him in heaven below or heaven above. Ifa travels by wind. That power to transform himself into wind belongs to Ishu. And Ifa borrows that power takes it in his mouth and it can turn into wind. If you are sitting outside your home in uh, hot summer heat and the gentle breeze just goes, moves by and you say, oh, thank God for this breeze. That is either issue going or that may be Ifa. Maybe they are going to heaven above or they are going to heaven below. Oludumari does not have a wife. 
and he does not have a son or a daughter. Unlike the Christian um, high God, all of us are his sons and daughters. But we say, by way of speaking, we say that a son is the only child of Uludumari. A son. A son, which is to get back what you put in. If you did well, put out good things from your mouth, from your actions, from your deeds, you get the same thing back. If you did evil, you get the same thing back. That is all long, a son. Ko si e ni ti o hu waka, ti o long o ba o ne mo. There is nobody who will do something evil and who will go with her punishment. That is a cardinal Yoruba belief. Olodumare is male. It's a male entity. And um, even though he's male, oh. he has all the, only the only thing is in terms of sex, he may not have the sexual, sexual organs of a woman, but he embodies so many things that women uh, do or believe. Olodumari um, is a celestial power, but as I told you, it's also a power of this earth inside the crust of the earth. And he has given us certain moral tenets to follow. All these are in Ifa. Ifa is one of the um, divinities to whom Oludumari has endowed limitless wisdom. If I tell you about what if I is, you may not even believe. There are 256 books in the literature of FIFA. 256. And each book has 800 stories. All these are stories that are in the Ifa literary corpus. Ifa is the most extensive literature on earth. If it were possible for us to um, record even what is extant today that has not been forgotten of FIFA, you are going to the 800 stories in each Udu 
you may write into books of 1,000 pages that are in 10 volumes for one Odu alone. And there are 256 Odu. It's a whole library. All these are from the wisdom of Uludu Mari. It bothers me, it has bothered me since childhood till now that the Yoruba people have not thought it fit to enshrine Putifar on a pedestal and uh, establish a huge institution which people from all over the world will attend. The literature of FIFA talks about everything. We are talking about any type of bee, it's in IFA. We are talking about any insect, it's in IFA. We are talking about a bird. Talk anything that the Yoruba have come across. Now, this lecture is on Uludumari. We do not give sacrifice to Uludumari. Sacrifice is given to the Orisha. And it is the duty of issue on a daily basis to travel by wind to heaven above or heaven inside the earth to make a report of what is going on on earth. We don't make any sacrifice to Ludu Mari. It is enough for us to worship all the Ulishas and through our worship of the Ulishas, Oludu Mari would know whether we are worshiping him or not. We don't have any direct worship of Oludu Mari. I don't know if you have noticed that the Yoruba Christian Church seems to have done what we didn't do originally. They now have, the Yoruba Christian Church is like uh, a temple of Oludumari every day. They talk about Oludumari. So sometimes I, one of my writings, I said, is this a revenge <laughs> of Oludumari? because the indigenous Yoruba people didn't construct a temple for him. They didn't have a literature for him. They didn't have a dress for him. They didn't have um, big sacrifices to him. So maybe he didn't like that. And then he now make it possible for, uh, some part of the population of Yoruba land now to begin to have a, a court of Oluduma. Don't let me use the word court. Uh, to have um, a congregation who worships Oludumari. Um, Oludumari, however, still functions in the far. You, we know everything that we know about any Orisha in the far. We also know about Oludumari in the far. Far tells us everything we need to know about him. Um, 
Olodu Mare, as I told you, lives in heaven above and also lives uh, underneath inside the earth. And you can access him by prayers. You can access him by um, symbolic gestures. So he does not take sacrifice directly by himself. And it is believed that all the Orishas, all the things we can learn from the Orishas come directly also from Oludumari. Uh, there is no Orisha that can claim to be more important or to be poor. There is no food of him, there is no literature of him, it's only the far. That will get my friend, my friend come out of him. Ah, ah, eh, 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 um, I'm going to mute everybody. When you want to speak to us, you cannot mute. Uh, we do this all the time, but people still make that mistake to talk when when they are not supposed to be talking without muting. Daddy, Moti, I, I, I did mute. I did. Uh, please, can you unmute? Can, can you unmute, Sababa? Yeah. It's okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, everything that Ifa talks about, we believe, comes directly from Oludumari. All the powers of this earth come directly from Oludumari. And Ifa himself goes to heaven from time to time. You know, I published a story of Ifa in a book which was commissioned by UNESCO. The book is 16 Great Poems of Ifa. That book first appeared in 1975. You can still find it uh, to buy. It's been um, we, we, um, you have a second edition of it. And you can find it in uh, bookshops in Nigeria. It was published, the second edition was published by University Press Limited in Ibada. And in that book, in fact, tells us how when heaven was in turmoil and Oludumari sent for Ifa to come and divine for him in heaven. Ifa by that time had a, his first wife had three children. So he left enough money, enough foodstuffs, all those things that his wife would need because he thought 
the journey will take 16 days. So he left money for the wife and family. So he went to heaven. But he didn't come back. By the time he thought he had gone for 16 days, but 17 years had already elapsed on earth. No, Einstein's theory of um, relativity of time. So heaven, I think heaven above is, when, when you go, you think you have gone there for 16 days. But by the time you come back, people you left behind would have counted 17 years. If I goes to, let me close the door, goes to heaven, if you goes to heaven on the invitation of Olodumare to divine and do sacrifices in heaven, by the time he comes back, it will have already been 17 years. He would have thought, he would think that he just went uh, for 16 years, uh, 16 days. But 17 years would have already have elapsed on earth. Um, what else can I tell you about Uludumari? There are no colors of him. Like the color of his shoe is black. The color of Ifa is indigo, blue, black. Indigo is the national color of the Yoruba people. Mm. Color of a loo. Do you know that until recently, Um, when I say recently until the early 60s, uh, people in Europe, factories in Europe used to send people to Yoruba land to learn about indigo, about, and every town will have a large area, every town of the Yoruba, where you go and dye your cloth. There may be in some towns, 100 people with their own separate uh, establishment to dye cloth. All that has disappeared. Why? Because when all those factories came, when they, were, they started manufacturing, um, jeans, blue jeans, which all those ideas came from us. Now they now started to manufacture dye too, that is inside an envelope and you just pour it into water and then you have the dye. Our own factories of a loo where people dye, uh, manufactured, uh, use dye stuff to dye clothes into any color you want. That has completely disappeared. Um, probably the best thing will be if people want to ask questions because I don't want to repeat what I've said before. Uh, Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. For those of you who are just joining us, we have the honor today to uh, be hosting our Baba, the Awishi Agbaye, Baba Wo Professor Wande Abimbola, who is talking to us about Olodumare, Olorun, the I God in Yoruba belief. I, I see that people already raise up hands all over the place. But I have a question that I'm going to throw in as um, 
but but is um how did they uh, i know did the same god that creates us is it the same god that they create that creates the orisha that work for god like you said A very good question um I've searched through IFA for an answer to that question for many years. It would appear that IFA was not created by anybody. Mm. Uh, probably Obatala also. But I'm concrete about the statement that if I was not created by anyone, he coexisted with Olodumari. Hmm. So all the other Urishas were probably created by Olodumari. And do you know that we humans are created by the Ulisha. Everything I'm telling you is for me far. Mm. There is no truth of any religion except what is embodied in its holy book. If you have a Christian evangelist and you say, eh, what is uh, so and so, you say, oh, wait a minute. We go so yes, it, uh, book uh, the such and such a book in the Bible, verse so and so. That's the same thing for us. Mm. It's uh, a belief system. There's no other proof beyond the lit the holy literature, the holy books of that religion. Mm. I haven't found any evidence that if I was created by Oludumari, I think he coexisted with him. Mm -hmm. And we were created when the Orishas came down from heavy and created dry land from water. They created vegetation. They brought uh, animals, birds from heavy insects. Then they descended from Okeara, where they were for hundreds of years in the vicinity of Ilefe. And when they arrived in Ilefe, they intermarried among themselves for a while and produced their own children. Then they decided to create human beings also. So Ogun supplied the skeleton. That is why everybody is a child of Ogun. When Bogbowa, Ogun Jobi, he supplied the skeleton on which Obatala, molded a clay substance mm. and uh, that uh, he uh, molded in the shape in which human beings now find themselves. Mm. He created a mouth, ears, nose, nose trees, eyes, that is why we say Uju is a child of Obatala. Mm. And Uju, the child of Obatala, got lost. Mm. Aye, space on which Obatala did is creation work. You see, without space, there's nothing you can do. Even if you want to die, you need a space on which to die. 
everything has to be done within a space. Mm. Aye is also a child of Obatala. But Aye and Uju got lost, and people have been looking for them till tomorrow. May Ifa help us so that we, we will be the ones to find Uju and Aye. Only our mama Roju. Oh, ah, ah, mama, raye, oh, ah, ah, mama, roju, ah, ma, oh, satono, oju, anayi, a children of Obatala. Obatala did his clay work with water supplied by Oshun. Mm. All I'm telling you is from me far. Remove this white substance on the... That's why, thank you. Um, so, the four entities involved in the creation of humans, according to Ifa, are Ogun, who, pre, who uh, manufactured the skeleton, or Batala, who used clay substance from heavy to mold human beings in the form in which we are. Or Shun, who supplied the water. And Uludu Mari, who came at night, like in the Bible, stealthily breathed the breath of life into the nostrils already created by um, Obatala, and then we became human. Those are the four entities. Thank you, Baba. Um, I'm going to call uh, Professor Adenira Deboye, one of uh, Amuye Yoruba Gude, who has raised a rest of his hand to ask Baba a question. Baba Deboye, please unmute, sir. OK. Baba. I'm so happy to be here to learn more about the fundamentals of Yoruba belief. And this time around, not from uh, uh, Professor Bolaji Dewu's book, as you said, that book was influenced by another conceptual framework, which is Christianity as well. But now we are hearing from somebody who doesn't have that tincture. So we get a fuller story about the fundamentals of Yoruba belief, the real Yoruba belief. I'm very happy to be here to uh, learn that. However, I'm also very, very happy that the Babalawu, which is Baba Alawu, Baba, the, the, the knowledgeable person about the secret of the universe from the universe perspective, is also a renowned intellectual, a former vice chancellor, a former this, a former that, so that we, we have what is, it's, it's possible for me to raise questions that he will address from more than one vantage point. 
the philosophers, or there is an emerging question uh, among philosophers as to whether we must believe that God or the gods created humans. Or the humans created gods. Uh, what do they mean? The creation one direction is physical, that is molding as uh, Obatala and Ogun and uh, Ulodumari uh, contributed to, that's physical creation of human beings. But the spiritual creation of God seems to have occurred in every culture. And, it is, and that's the main reason why it is impossible for somebody like me to think that a particular religion is uh, superior to another because they all reflect the culture in which they were evolved. So how lucky are we, or we're very lucky, to have somebody who has tremendous scholarly bent, philosophical um, uh, capabilities, as well as fundamental knowledge of Yoruba religion. How do you address, not from the religious point of view alone, but from your professional uh, preparation, how do you address the fact that people believe that we created a God so that he can create us? Thank you. What were the learned professor I just mentioned has been addressed in a book. All the things I'm telling you, most of it are in books. Okay. The thing is, our people don't read. <laughs> and I'm one of them. <laughs> so they don't read. And they will, when I give a lecture somewhere, they will say, oh, Baba, why don't you write this down? What you call it? I, I have at least 10 books. That hmm. Go to any library in the entire world and uh, click on my name, at least one or two or three books. Many of them have been translated into so many languages of mm -hmm. the world. But we don't read. Now, there is a book I wrote in 1997, a small book. I wrote it as an introduction into Yoruba religion and thought. The title is, If I Will Mend Our Broken World. What? And I discuss what the learned professor I just mentioned. Mm. The Logians have, since a long time, been wondering, did uh, God create humans? Or human beings created God? in their own image. Because what a high God of any society does mimics the way their own society is structured. Exactly. So we will see that uh, in our own society, we have kings. We have emperor, we have kings, we have noble men and women. So the same reason, that's why we have all these innumerable uh, hundreds of uh, divinities known as Orisha. The original ones were supposed to be 401 or plus one. That plus one representing the principle of increase or accretion in their number. So when the Yoruba come into contact with uh, um, the divinity of one of their neighbors, they may incorporate it into their own belief system too. That is why we share so much with the fund, people of Benin Republic. We may, have, we may share like 20 
or more uh, Ulishas. They are all what we call Shago, Kawo, Kabi, Sile, is what they call Hevioso. They have Ifa, we have Ifa, we have um, everything that you can think of that is, we have in their own thought system, we also have. So that is because their society, the phone, are supposed to be a Yoruboid people in linguistics. Um, we believe that there are five families of languages in Africa. The Niger Congo family to which Yoruba belongs. And in that family, there is um, a smaller family called Yoruboid, that is the languages that function in their syntax, in their morphology, in their phonetics that function almost like our own Yoruba language. So that's why the form, uh, we share the same, um, so, so many Orishas in common. And when you look at our society, the same thing uh, that we have, we have kings, we have noble men and women, and so on. Same thing that that's how we have the high God, we have the Orishas, and so on. Yeah, you are quite right, Professor. The um, belief system of a people uh, mirrors their society. Can I add one more question? Yes, please. Yes. I say Kuko. No, I, I have to speak English. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, thank you very much, sir. Just one more question, and that is really mundane. Okay. <laughs> the, what is mundane about it is that the world that I was born into, and maybe even the one that you were born into, uh, a Yoruba country was already a conquered world in the sense that uh, foreigners had come, whether from Arabia or from Europe, they had discovered us and they had used whatever was available to them in the, the form of force to conquer us physically. But then an argument is also made, and it looks weird, that they, they attempted, and uh, almost, I mean, unsuccessfully too, to, to a large extent, to conquer us spiritually. That may be summed up in what I read recently that says, the holy land of Arabs is in Arabia. The holy land of Europeans is in Rome, which is in Europe. The only land of Chinese is in China. The only land of Indians is in India. The only land of Koreans is in Korea. The only land of the African is not in Africa. For the Christians and Muslims, not yeah. for me. <laughs> eh? Not for the people who worship the Orisha, the divinities of our ancestors. Ilefe is our own holy land. Oh yeah, but the, uh, yes sir. Uh, the, I think the plurality that people are looking for is that whereas at this point in time, we have some people outside of Africa that worship according to Yoruba uh, system of belief, they are not the kind of number or majority of, in comparison, of Africans that worship gods outside of their land. They are believing 
passionately to in the religions brought into Africa by other people. For instance, there may well be more churches and mosques in uh, any one town in Yoruba country than there are temples to the Urishas. So there is this inbred or this inferiority complex that seems to be holding us back so that we are not able to emerge on the world stage as equal partners to the rest of humanity. Thank you, Prof. And I think that is what uh, I hope, well, once you address that question, which I know you will, <laughs> you might also be able to recommend to us what our steps should be if we must emerge, unless we are going to remain a dominated inferior race for the rest of time. Thank you. There is nothing wrong in sharing your belief system, but when uh, you convert wholesale and you take to heart hook, line, and sinker, hmm. the belief system of other people, then you've been conquered then you, if you are the holy land, you don't know your way there. <laughs> Many African peoples don't know the way home. People who were taken from Africa to the Americas, to the Middle East, and enslaved, are not the only enslaved people. Those of us on the African continent, who think our holy land is in Israel, or our holy land is in uh, Saudi Arabia, we too have been enslaved. We may not know. Hmm. And it, it uh, puzzles me that an ethnic group as large as the Yoruba, more than 50 million in Nigeria alone, five million in Benin Republic, another five million in Togo Republic. Do you know that there are between two and three million Yorubas in Ghana? I'm not talking of those people who went there to trade from Obomasho or Ijibo, but that's their own land. When the Europeans were dividing borders, the border uh, put them in what the country now called Ghana. There are at least 200 Yoruba towns and villages in Ghana. When you add all that together, in Sierra Leone, about 2 million Yoruba people are there. In Sudan, another 3 million. You, you have like something more than approaching like 60 million or more on the African continent alone. In Brazil, there's another 50 to 60 million people who are Brazilians, who believe they are from Yoruba land. In Cuba, between six and seven million out of 12 million. All these places I'm talking to you, the only place I've not been is uh, Sudan. Now, the Yoruba all over the world are more than 100 million people. And they just give that away. They don't talk about any holy land or anything. Their holy land is in Israel or in Saudi Arabia. I've not seen anything wrong with uh, Saudi Arabia being a holy land or Israel being a holy land. But we have our own holy land. I discussed with late Oni Ofife, long time ago, that is it possible for all the others to meet? And let us declare July or July or, or, and August as holy months of the Yoruba people in the world and gave it to that agenda, gave it to 
a select few people who are interested. And let's make a propaganda about that all over the world. Let the, in the, in the Jebus bring out argument at that time. Let uh, or the Olodo Festival of FIFA be at that time. Let no, it be at that time. <laughs> Every year, people will come to Yoruba land in those two months to spend more than $10 billion. That, that's what we should, when we are asking for a, our homeland, and I salute the people are doing so. If we don't take that along with us, even if we become independence, it wouldn't be a real independence. We need to know who we are. And who is going to do it? It's only those of us who are watching me now, or people like you, the intellectuals, or let people I call the intelligentsia. You are the people to do it. Nobody will do it for you. I, uh, in the year 2013, I think, I, I was invited to Switzerland. And in 13 days, I was there for 13 days. I received a delegation from 17 countries of Europe who came to salute me, 17 countries. Eh? We need to know, if you feel that strongly about Yoruba having a homeland of their own, why don't you feel strongly about us upholding our own beliefs? Why don't you feel strongly about us upholding our own language? Mm. Why don't you feel strongly about us wearing our own dresses? I have traversed the whole length and breadth of this universe. Father. I do, have not encountered anybody who dresses as well. Okay. Uh, i there's nobody who dresses better. All of you have traveled. Have you ever encountered anybody who wears better dress than Yoruba people in the world? Ooh. That's the problem we have. We, the intelligentsia, are the problem. Mm. I, when my daughter was introducing me, I, ever since I left secondary school, I have never worn a coat or a tie. That's who am I? That when you see Indians, uh, do you see them? Do you, have you ever seen an Indian prime minister dressed like a uh, British or American? Have you ever seen an Indian woman who doesn't wear their own dress? So why are we asking for a homeland if we do? not want to espouse our own culture. What, what's, the, what's the benefit of having a homeland? Eshim. Mm. Uh, I'm going to call Eshim Baba. I'm going to call Alagba uh, Banji Ayiloge to uh, ask his own question. Sir Baba Banji. <clears throat> I want to greet you again. Uh, my question, my question is, is, the, is it about one or one and a half question? Ah, right, bro. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Please be louder. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, I'm body. 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 I'm
I greet you once again. Uh, my, my question is just about one and a half. It's just about one and a half. And the first one which which has been bothering me about religion is where I mean where you started before, where Kosen is on Nimu and the Bajeka. Uh, the concept of karma in, is in every religion, including our own, except in Christianity, I guess, and uh, perhaps uh, in, uh, in the Muslim religion. Now, she Come, I mean, she a year at your own time, my time. So, does it include paradise and hell below? God bless you. So, like uh, the way you were saying it, like we have two heavens one in the sky and one down below. Now, the concept of heaven is about paradise and all that in other religions. However, hell is where the Christian belief says the punishment is. I just want clarification. In traditional religion. There's no such thing as traditional religion. Indigenous, indigenous religion. Indigenous religion. There's no religion that doesn't have its own tradition. I misspoke. <laughs> now, there, I mean, what is the concept of this hell full of punishment for those who may have erred and heaven for those who have done well on earth. Right. I just wanna you want to know about whether we have the same thing like heaven right. uh, and uh, hell. In view of the fact that we agree that whoever whoever is on us is going to reap that even before leaving, you know, that he could send it all on him when he buys a car. Uh, ben, you know, Fana Latiri Bugwe is always from me far. Yeah, it's uh, that's our own belief enshrined in the far. That if you, well, it may, you may even die well and they bury you well, but maybe things you leave behind <laughs> may not last. And people will say, oh, look at it. He wasn't a good person. Oh, see, his house is um, uh, falling to ruins. Oh, see what is happening to his children? Right, that's true. All that is from our own. You know, Ifa is the biggest, by far the biggest, but each Orisha also has its own literature. When I started, the chant I rendered is in, from the literature of Ogun called the Jala. So, so it's this, is this the lemma? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Right. So that I I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, it's well. Yeah, uh, at least uh, yes, I can say yes. The the half question uh, is not even a question; it's an observation. When I started the journey into indigenous uh, religion uh, years ago, uh, yeah, that was the time I came across this. The, the book you just mentioned, "If I Would Mend Our Broken World," I I had that, and I had that of uh, Professor uh, Mobology, uh, the prelate of Methodist Church of Nigeria. At that time. Yes, and uh, mm -hmm. even Pascal, mm -hmm. a, a, a European mm -hmm. uh, author. However, this this goes to what you, the challenge you threw at us. 
that how can we have a homeland without having the religion and all that? The concept of homeland that we are asking for is to redraw or bring back Yoruba civilization. Not so, we know that even before the Europeans came, Yorubas were actually at the uh, uh, what I would call the peak of our civilization. We had all these things established, government, religion, and everything, and they threw it apart. And those of us who are on the forefront of asking for a homeland, we are not just saying political. Politically, we will be able to determine no, this our exactly destiny. Mm -hmm. We will be able to talk about Yoruba progress. We are not saying that it's only politics that, that, that we are saying now. The, the, the other aspect is the challenge that you threw earlier on. Thank you. That we will have had a center devoted to Yoruba religion. And I don't think there is any other person that is much more qualified to head that kind of uh, uh, institution. Not I mean, by you in the whole of your land, you have the clout, you have the experience, you have the qualification. All you need to do is just, you know, like you're doing now, point us to the to the right direction. I will, will enable to make it happen. That's all I want to say. That's you. I don't. Do you know that I established an institute in you know, your town in the year 2008, and it is still there now, mm. yeah. entitled IFA Heritage Institute. In the year 2000, I took IFA to UNESCO, and UNESCO proclaimed the IFA as a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. And then they said the Nigerian government should establish an institute around it at tertiary level. And they got the Minister of Education to sign an agreement with UNESCO to establish such an institute. I went to Abuja six times. The, at that time, uh, it, it, um, I think it was like 42,000 Naira to go to Abuja. I don't remember whether it's one way or both ways. And then you would, there's no hotel that is less than about 15, 20,000 in Abuja. Some of those times I went with members of our board, who may be six or seven number of people, all that, six times. Mm. Then I went, I wrote to Obasanjo and called him on telephone. He's a friend of mine. And I, I served as an advisor to him for two years before. I said, well, when you leave, what is going to happen to this if our project, which your government has approved? So he invited me to Abuja, and I went with our board members, and he called select people from his cabinet. His vice president was there. Uh, his um, um, uh, everybody was there. And he had asked me to write a brief, like a summary of what I wanted. And then in front of all these dignitaries, I presented what I wanted and he said, all right. Now the Minister of Culture and Tourism who was Fanekayodi, 
Let me find, okay. Yes. FFK. Mm. What do you have to mm. say to that? Mm. Our own son, Panika, they said, oh, what is Baba bringing? Ifa? What do you call Ifa? Something mm. that has been forgotten? Ah. Do you want to hear anything about it again? And his name is Fanny Coyote. <laughs> he said, Baba, we have, we've forgotten about that. Ah. It's nonsense. Don't bring that to, a, 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 to the cabinet of Obasanjo anymore. <laughs> we are upon the chief of staff of Obasanjo, uh, General Mohammed from Iloni, said, he saw how I was angry. I wanted to speak. He said, no, don't speak as yet. I'm going to. He said, anybody who doesn't understand Yoruba, I'm going to say, please, I apologize. I want to speak in Yoruba. He said, and I begin by raising a song. Oni aye la ba fa o, aye la ba male. Aye la ba fa, aye la ba mani o, o san gan gan, ne ba bo o, wo le de de de. So, Obasanjo himself said, oh, I'm sorry. Now, before I appointed you Minister of Culture, didn't oh. I tell you that you shouldn't talk like this about Anything indigenous to uh, Nigeria? Yeah. He should have just given give him his uh, firing letter from there. I am a Christian, I am. <laughs> but I, I do. Supposing the press were around, where are we going to be tomorrow morning mm -hmm. if the Minister of Culture is talking about like this in front of the press? So when we finished, so. Uh, so Obasan just said, I, I, I look into it. I do something about it. So when we finish, he came, he said, Baba, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 now that the president has uh, said it's a good thing, we will do something about it. Uh, so the people went with me, we went to a restaurant. And we were eating in the restaurant, I said, I want to raise an Ifa song. Mm. <laughs> If you want to be a Christian, it's a matter of free choice, or you are already one. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, or Islam, or whatever. But why should we? be the ones to put down the culture and the foundations of our own civilization. You know, we should have a rule that nobody should speak evil of our own belief system. That's why I don't go to church anymore. I don't go to church because I don't have anything to do there. But if your son is marrying or your daughter, and you invite me and we are friends, I will go. If I don't do things like that, I will. Leave. I have been um, voted in to be a senator from Oyo. Mm. What places? <laughs> So, but now, nowadays when I go there, they be, uh, the pastor will change. I say, look, if you are a, a Baba Lawo, you go, you are not going to heaven. You go <laughs> to all sorts of nonsense. Yes. I, I challenge 
all of you intelligentsia, tell them to shut up, not to say such a nonsense anymore. I don't charge, I don't say the Christianity, there's anything wrong with it. I don't know if anything is wrong with it. But our own, uh, his own father or grandfather, it cannot, if it wasn't his grandfather, it would be his great grandfather. Christianity is not much longer than that in Yoruba land. So, so the religion that his grandfather or great grandfather practiced, his great grandfather is in hell right now because it's the Babala war. <laughs> I wrestled with this all my life. When I, I was vice chancellor for seven years, nothing happened in my own time. Baba, can I follow up with just one little yes. thought? I met him. Doris, I had to, you know, establish a little church because people were going to churches that are not coming. I would like to ask my question for God's sake. Okay. Um, oh, no, um, too deep. You have uh, okay. I wanted to talk. I want to, I have a question I for my man, a short question. Okay. Um, is it um, Alaba Dipo or Akishiku? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you, Yoruba. I'm um, also here. Baba, uh, that was supposed to be the line of my question to you that what can we do again to begin to tackle who are apt to stigmatize the indigenous religion. And, uh, and, I, and how do we begin to counter that? How do, do we begin to educate them? That will be my, the first part of my question. question. Then well, the second part uh -huh. is even, we, even the, our traditional rulers who are supposed to be the custodian of our culture, uh, in many instances now, they are not even proud of it, apart from wearing a bad and that's it. Some of them you hear uh Oba, Oba, Timothy, uh Ezekiel, Kinika, Oba, Jeremiah, Kinika, Akbako, Akbako, the uh, <laughs> Association of Christian Sobers. A lot of people call them Akbako, they don't call them Akbako. Yeah, and these are these are supposed to be the custodian of the culture. How do we educate these people? And I have also noticed a trend now that even the younger ones are lost. They are the ones given the Priscilla uh, to their own children. So that how is, do that we is why this I said, is a big problem? What is the need to have ask for a homeland if that is the direction with which we want to go? Let me complete for your information. Before I answer your question, what happened at that meeting in uh, Surok? So I don't pass, so I don't follow through. He um, put down one million, either one million or one point one million dollars to establish a tertiary institution on Ifa in you know, your town. And there were other, I don't know whether five or seven other uh, things like that to share the $1.1 million. I went to Abuja for years. Nobody has released the $1.1 million till today. That's why I established that school by myself. Then I went to the next school. I went to UNESCO in Paris. Now the Nigerian government is not forthcoming with anything. Can I do something? They say, yes. We don't have money as UNESCO to give you, but you can use our name to establish the school. The school is there since 2008. Every month, I send money in, $1,000, more than that, for the payment of staff, for all everything that we do there since 2008. We have graduated 
more than 300 people. We have five faculties. Faculty of Yoruba of languages, where we teach Yoruba, we teach English, and we used to teach Spanish. Yes. But that we, we couldn't find it, uh, the teachers easily. So we teach that only when I go home with uh, my wife who, who speaks uh, excellent Spanish. We have faculty of FIFA studies where we teach every student must know two stories of FIFA in 256 places making a total of 512 uh, stories that he has to learn by heart and be able to degurgitate in front of us and tell us what it means. We have a school of Yoruba medicine. We have a school of Yoruba uh, dance. We teach them dondo -don dance, bata dance, and our go go, which Babala was danced to. And then we have the School of Yoruba Art. The school is still there. If you go to Oyo, anytime, it's on the Laura Road, go and find it there. I built two huge um, buildings. Each one at that time costing me, the first one cost me 12 million, the second one 10 million. All with my own, the only person who has ever helped? Because I didn't ask for anybody's help. I say, if I will ask for help, I want to start. If you have a load by the side of the road, the load is heavy. You cannot carry it. Can you just sit and say, put, put it on my head? You will be the one to stoop down to carry the load. Then somebody who wants to help you will also help to carry it on your head. Mm. That's what I, all really of us can do something. Uh, the school is still there till today, till tomorrow. We need to do something about our culture. This has nothing to do with whether you want to be a Christian or a Muslim. Those of you who are Christians, I have no, nothing wrong with it. I don't see anything wrong with it. If you are a Muslim, fine. But about our own common heritage. That's all I'm asking for. And it doesn't diminish yeah, any. Yeah. When I was vice chancellor, I come out like a gugu, I wear beaded shoes, I will hold the rocket beaded in my hands. The middle of the children see me, they know their father is here. <laughs> Nobody will teach them before they prostrate. If you are a woman, you kneel down, Baba, oh, Bab, for seven years. It is in our own culture that our glory lies. That's where our glory lies. If we allow our culture to it's die, we die with it, mm. whether we have a homeland or not. Mm. Mm. So there was a question that he asked. OK. And can you remind me of that question right now? <laughs> About uh, the stigmatization and the, our traditional rulers oh. who are supposed to be the custodians of our culture, moving away from it, bearing English names and, uh, you know. Yeah. We need to do something about that too. And it's in their own interest, in the interest of our traditional rulers. Yeah, get to, to start with, the message to me. if you want to what know the number of traditional rulers in Yoruba land, yeah. you have to organize a major census. There may be more than 10,000 today. Yeah. Every hamlet, every village oh, has wow. a king. Some may have two kings. <laughs> uh, what, what is that about? That there is a, a, a student of mine wrote about that. The first student I supervised at the University of Ilefe in 1974. She got her PhD in 1977. Her name is Karen Baba. She is 
uh, the professor at the University of Birmingham. The today, the Institute uh, uh, African Studies Institute. She likes I don't know what's going on in Yoruba land to what they call big man. Mm. In uh, some islands of Australia, <laughs> it, Yoruba land has become a domain of big men. You wield your influence. Oh, you have influence. You can take anybody's uh, wife. You can have. Uh, you can marry twenty wives. You can have. Uh, you even have a jet, or you have. Then cars. We have to find an answer to that. And then you come out and say, I'm a Christian. I don't want to see anybody worship Shambo anymore. Come to my house and say, and say that in you know, your town. I will make sure that you do you don't you don't walk on your two legs. <laughs> if you come to the front of my house to say that. <laughs> That's not the way out. That's not the way forward. We have to find a way. A king can be a Muslim. He can be a Christian. He can be a Hindu. He may even be an atheist. But why is he king if he doesn't have a way to uh, do something to enhance our common culture, our common heritage? We need to do something about that. I think that may be something for tomorrow. We don't have enough time to talk about that, but we all know that where we are going with our oh. indigenous, uh, you know, rulers you know, or things or whatever name you call them, is not good. We have come to a stage in which we have innumerable kings. It detracts, it, it doesn't help the idea of kingship. It takes something away from it. We had that, but you're happy too much on it. Why, okay. why, why can't I have too much? I can have three much. Why can't I, I it's something that I feel passionately about. Who are you always saying that? Shut up your dirty mouth. Don't talk to me like that. Who is that? You if not you don't, to talk unless if you, you don't value the, the culture of your ancestors, I do. And That's I talk right, like this all over the world. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, we, that is not the that is not what we do here. Whoever is talking, you are not supposed to be talking. That is rude. And if I get hold of that person, I'm going to remove him completely. We are we are following Yoruba culture. Okay, now um um uh, Mr. Adeyinka Olaya from Brazil, what is your question? Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening. <laughs> thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I will thank uh, Baba Professor Wandia Bimbola Babala. Once again, I'm able to speak with him. Uh, on that conference, so though we received him here, and yesterday we received him on the sun here. Uh, I'll ask a question uh, that's a bit technical, uh, and I want Baba to find his time and explain better. The other time you were in Brazil, I actually asked you that same question. Uh, today, thank God, thank God, you have you've touched it again but now in a, in a more complex manner. Uh, this is about Orisha, Nifa. Uh, you know, we are, we are quite uh, conversant with it in Brazil here. We are practically uh, 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 Orisha, Nifa here in Brazil. And that is, I live here 28 years in Brazil. So uh, part of my life here in Brazil, you know, and I was lucky to even be uh, uh, one of the, the beneficiary of Baba when he was in the university as vice chancellor. Uh, you mentioned Ifa. Now uh, you actually uh, 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 talked of Ifa as, uh, as, uh, as a deity that actually that did not 
or that no 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 no, no evidence that Ifa uh, was created, uh, Ifa coexisted with Olujumari. Yeah. And uh, on the other hand, you agreed that Olujumari created uh, Orishas. And uh, possibly Ifa also helped when Orishas were uh, uh, being created. And you also mentioned uh, okay, where this 17 rumor is, I, I think it's okay, Tashi in Ilife, at the creation of the world. Where it Oshu, uh, okay, Tashi, okay, Tashi, hmm. where the, the, the 17 rumor is arrived from Ludo Mare to create Ile, Ile Aye. Uh, Baba, for several years now, we've had this technical argument in Brazil and in Oyo and even in Ileife. Uh, recently, we read a number of articles by Sholak Bade and uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, Yoruba uh, uh, traditionalists that uh, Ifa practice, that uh, only Ifa, they are superior to Lurisha. And this has caused a number of arguments. Even the last time uh, uh, Baba Ikuba Bayeye came on board uh, uh, on a Zoom right. call, this question also went to him, of which a particular doctor, uh, an European or there about in uh, Afi, she came up with Idasa that uh, Idasa is uh, older than the Ibu Nipa. And uh, that's how I uh, actually was what they were practicing in Oyo before Ifa came. Today, we have a lot of uh, writers in Brazil, in academics in Brazil, that are publishing, sending videos, publishing and denying what Ifa is, even saying that Orumila probably uh, 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 came out of confusion uh even today i spoke with afin on this issue and uh, i've asked to interview the woman there and i would have spoken with you about some locations uh, with your analysis now that uh, if i coexisted with lord mari now no evidence that if i was created and citing one of the 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 the, the essay if I, that you actually but I saw one of your renderings that uh, if I, uh, uh, no, let me, let me put that one away. I think you, you go back to that. So let's, I, let's uh, the, go to uh, pinpoint the question. The question? So back the question now is, mm. is with yeah, this yeah. question now, if I coexisted with Lord Mary, no proof that if I uh, was created and for your own crusade of what if I is, like, you created you from the school there, you taking Ifa here and there. Are you confirming or are you saying that Ifa is the 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 the, 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 the worshippers of Ifa are superior to Olorisha? I didn't say if anything is superior to anything. This this our religion is not based on a hierarchy. Competition. No, it's not hierarchical to say, oh, this is the highest, this is the lowest. No, it's not in part of our own belief system. Anybody who claims, and you can claim anything. Before I became a professor of literature, my first um, academic study was history. I took a honors degree in history. In historical discourse, if you claim anything, and I think in any scientific discourse too, you can if you claim something, you must show evidence. All those people you say are writing books, where is the evidence? They, they should show us which verse of Ifa supports what they, and the evidence will be just within the fact. You should tell us what is the evidence that supports what he claims. 
that uh, one Orisha is more supreme or whatever. So it's, uh, it's, don't let us waste much time about this. Any discourse where there is no evidence, it could just be that maybe you speculate. That could be speculation, which is allowed. But you don't want us to take that seriously. If you must take it seriously, it must be supported by evidence. And that, that, that's not the thing that we are concerned about, whether one Ulisha is bigger than another and so What I'm concerned about is, this is your own religion that gave birth to our own nation as Yoruba people. It's going down the drain. If you cannot support it, if you cannot participate in it, don't try to say something that will lead to its demise. It's like a self-inflicted wound. Mm -hmm. Don't say something that uh, you may have a congregation of one million people, I don't care. And I wouldn't come there to say what you are saying, doing is not good. But why would you want our own culture to perish? What, what do you gain if that happens? And unfortunately for them, unfortunately for us, the whole world has uh, seen the value of our beliefs and practices. As I, I started by saying, Yoruba religion is one of the fastest growing religions in the world. I, I live most of the time in the, in the United States. Here in the United States, we are to count the people who are in practicing Yoruba religion here, there'll be a good fraction of a million. There is no country in the world where they don't practice Yoruba. If you go to Murita Ram Mohammed Airport in Lagos, there is hardly any day that you will find people wearing white. They may be 20, they may be a batch of three or four or 10. In a day, there may be like 20, 30, 40 people who have come from different parts of the world to be initiated to Ifa, to be initiated to Oshun, to be initiated. If you like, whether you want or not, if you are a practicing Christian, if your wish is that our religion should perish, it's not going to perish. It's, <laughs> the whole world has same value in what we do. Hey, Joseph. Yes. Shumuli, that's it. Benny. Uh, okay. Just to help, just to, just to help, I put a little bit of uh, uh, two or three sentences. No matter what religion we're talking about, uh, Mr. Olaya, I'm, I know the Bible from Genesis chapter one, verse one to Revelation chapter 22. Hello, <laughs> I was born in a church going home, and I was born to a grandfather who was a Babalawu. I think I've told the Professor Abibola that before. So I'm enriched by the fact that all of those things existed around me. What I have found, though, and let me go back to Christianity, is that there are always issues in almost any religion, there are always disputes about interpretation. Let's talk about Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. That is believed by a large number of the Christian churches, but not all of them. Indeed, the dispute 
about Trinity created enough problem in Europe before the 15th century that they went to war about whether or not Trinity is a right doctrine. That's it. And so if we have challenges in the Yoruba uh, religious uh, situation about whether it does or if I or this or that uh, one way or another, that's exactly in, in tradition with almost all, any religion on the planet because they are faiths and beliefs and subject to interpretation by their own members about what it is that this means or doesn't mean. We should not worry our head too much about it because it's not a chemistry uh, situation where you have to uh, prove or disprove. It's certainly not mathematics. It is human beings and their concepts about how they got here. And they are passing that information to the next generation. And so a dispute is not a problem. Right. A resolution of dispute is not a problem. It's right. a validation of the people who Thank believe you. in that religion that we have to worry about. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, Thank you, is, Sister Shana, uh, can you uh, permit me to interject? I want to say yes, something. Yes, Bere, uh, go ahead. <laughs> I wanted to say that, uh, Daddy, uh, one million Olorisha in, Ameri in America is an understatement <laughs> because I know, I think I may know one million people. I don't know who are Olorisha here in the US. So I know that there may not be a statistics as of yet, but there are at least five to 10 million Olorisha, not counting the Santeria people who are, that is very big and they follow in the, it's also another way uh, of uh, Orisha practice. Yeah. So I'm just adding to the fact that Thank you. when you said and, one million people, well, I said it's the, the much more. fraction of a million. I don't know because we don't know exactly how many. The religion is spreading all yeah, over the world. That's that's oh, what yeah. we know. Mm. Uh, okay. And, um, uh, I see your hand up there. Ojisha uh, Shedale. Uh, good everybody. I borrow by you, Baba. I have a question uh, with regards the entities of Ajalamo. Uh, Me. Uh, also called Ajala Mori Mori, uh, which we found in uh, Obi, uh, in one of the Odu Sinifa. And then also I have a question. Yes, yes, Obi Yonu, yes, sir. I also have a question on um, Orumila, the entity of Orumila. Uh, one yes, of the, quick, quick, quick. We have so yes, many. One people. of the key of Orumila is Eleri Queen. And then uh, from my studies in the past, I was led to believe that Orumila was a creation of Elidumari. Uh, in some instances, he has been uh, alluded to be a second in command, Iba Keji Elidumari. Now, that being said, uh, you mentioned, sir, that uh, Ifa mm -hmm. itself was not created or there's no evidence that it was created. It may have been in existence at the same time. Uh, now, are you able to shed light right. on the issue of Onumila, the Eleri Me, which sometimes we say Onumila is if I, if I is Onumila. That being said, on the issue of uh, Obatala that you mentioned, the creation uh, whereby the molding after Shongu gives the skeleton. Are we able to Not relate? Shongu. I didn't say Shongu. Ugu. So, Oh, sorry, Ogun, I meant to say. Are we able to uh, correlate during the creation of man the role that Ajalamori, Ajalamori Mori played in the creation? You mentioned that there was mold in Rao Batala, but what role did Ajalamori play in that axis? Thank you, sir. My PhD thesis of 1970, is, there's a whole chapter on Uri there. You may want to, it's in all major libraries in the world. 
the title of the PhD thesis is IFA colon an exposition of, of IFA literary corpus. corpus. We want to uh, read that. It's a whole chapter. It's mm -hmm. our own contribution to the idea of um, destiny or predestiny, which you find in uh, every religion in the world, and which you find in the writings of Plato and Aristotle. It's our own um, way, our, our own contribution to say that a good part of a person's uh, life is what you are predestined with. Our own, if I, uh, and if I, we find that predestiny or destiny is like 50% or whether a person is successful or not when it gets to the earth. The remaining 50% is your own iwa. And it depends on what you do with your work what did you do with it? What did you do with your essay, your legs? Are you just sitting down doing nothing? Or are you struggling with your legs? <sighs> what did you do with your aya? Aya is the seat of friendship. Did you use your aya to make friends with good people? So destiny is about 50%. What you do, you do with your hands, what you do with your leg, what you do with your uh, friends and partners is really 50%. So it's a large issue, this issue of destiny, of which I wrote a whole chapter that my thesis of 1970, which has been written to a book since 1976, under that same title. Uh, uh, there's a whole chapter about it, right? Destiny is very, very important. And if you didn't choose a good destiny, what do you do? <laughs> what you do is you do able what the Christians and the Muslims have asked us not to do again, that is the heart and soul of our own belief system. I am telling you that if you do a boy, if you do divination and you do a boy about anything, it clarifies it and it helps it to fruition. I have profited by it many, many, many times. Unfortunately, there are charlatans everywhere, just that there are charlatans among the Christians and Muslims too, yeah. who may not know how to do any able, may not even know how to do any divination, all they want is money. Oh. You don't go to charlatans, if you do your divination from a qualified, bona fide Babalawo or Yanifa, and the prescribed sacrifice, for you and you did them, those sacrifices, oh, everything you are looking for, you will find. Baba, 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 from Nigeria. Thank What's your you. question, sir? Thank you very, very much indeed. I thank Almighty God with this opportunity with Baba Wale. I was the one who said happily, please forgive me the ballet. And I learned chapter from continuing what you question. My question arises from my past experience. About 1978 in England, London particularly, I had marital problem. 
and I saw a clairvoyant who told me things. I went that way. And when I returned to Nigeria recently, unfortunately, I'm having similar problem. And I decided to learn about the fact, because of that, somebody gave me this divining rope. Mm. So, oh, well, yes. Well, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, because of that, if I have a problem, 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 because while you are here, I was in England from 1959 until 1983. Mm. Mm. So, for God's sake, I want to know. That's why I come to you far now. And also, I cannot say, Gabby or Mofon, when you do Hmm. Oh, don't you want my do I'm about six now, going to seven. So mm. I cannot say you can come past or go by this and that. But today shall go is not my problem. I know it's a kind of religion, a kind of worship. But if I want to find out about what's happening to my life or to my children, so how do I go about you without know, going to charity taking sixty thousand, eighty thousand from me? How can I carry on like that? Right. There are charlatans who are looking for money to pay their rent or <laughs> do whatever they want to do. If you don't go to a charlatan, if you go to a bona fide Babala who knows what he's doing, every divination clarifies whatever is your problem. Surprises! I bought a book. I lent it to a professor. He threw it away. I can't find it. In fact, divination by um, Barkins or something. Well, I was successful. Hmm. Okay. Uh, if, right. Right. If you give, if you send me your send to. Uh, the director of this program, your telephone. She has my number, sir. Uh -huh. So I can introduce you to a bona fide Babala who is not going to be charging you thousands of Naira or anything like that. Yeah. I established an institute. I didn't, I, I didn't charge a penny for, I will graduate more than 300 people. I'm here just to help just to shed light on our way forward. I'm not here for anybody's money. Mm -hmm. So we can always help. Right. And I'm not- oh, yeah, yeah. I, I will make sure that the communication is- right. uh, okay. So can you please give uh, the host your thought or permission for me to be able to contact you on the phone? Possible. Yes, I'm yeah. going to make that happen after the program, Baba Jaye. Okay, have you do that, Baba Jaye? Uh -huh. I will do that. Okay. Hey, Shem. Um, Baba Fala, Doctor Fala Jogun Oluwajana from UK. Baba is here. What is your question? Please let's yeah. make it brief. Question, yeah. question, straight. Yeah. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you, Olotu. Good evening, sir, Professor Wande. I'm pleased to be able to talk to you. I will try and make my question as brief as possible. When I was growing up, I were, well, when the, a town or a city or a village has problems, they consult a fast uh, yes. enumerated that if I is right. messenger between human being and uh, Olodumori. Yes. They will confer. They will con confer with Tifa, and they will now tell them the direction. Is it still possible now to bring it into reality now to what we are dealing with? Can, is it still possible? Do we have people who can actually confirm or confer with Tifa and tell us this covert war that the Yoruba nation is facing? That what are we? Which way is it going? Is it something to pursue, or, is, or should we just back out? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I will give you the same reply as I did to the last speaker. 
if you go to a bona fide babalawo, you don't tell a babalawo what your problem is. You speak to his divination instruments and he will divine and find out your problem. I recommend Ebo, where the Christian says we should not do anymore. But that is the heart, that's the power of our religion. And it's not uh, a secret why it's so powerful. When you do Ebo, human beings may be permitted to eat out of the Ebo, or at least the cola nut that we throw when we finish the elbow, they will eat part of it. You put the elbow, if you first put it in the forest, rodents will eat out of it, birds will eat out of it, worms will eat out of it. If you put it near a river, fish will eat out of it. If you put it on a crossroad, uh, scavenging dogs, animals will eat out of it. The entire creation of human beings, animals, trees, insects have already eaten out of it. So they will now go to Ludumari and tell him that, oh, that man. He fed us, we are happy with him. We don't know what his problem is. Can you help? Help him. That's why a boy is so very, very important. It brings the entire world in focus and makes them work for you, pray for you, so that at least for a while, there's a resolution to your problem. Tomorrow may be another day, but for the time that your boy is working, it will work so that whatever you want to do, you'll be able to do. Yeah, thank you. The, the problem this time is not, it's not a personal problem. This is a, the Yoruba nation problem. Yeah. So who is going to do that type of for the Yoruba people? Oh, how do we have many qualified uh, babalawos in Nigeria? They should go. If you feel strongly about anything, whether it's the issue of your nation or whatever it is, go to a bona fide babalawo and they will do a ball. First of all, cast it far from the old dude that appears. We will know what uh, the message of Ifa is, and then you do a ball, right? Um, I see, I see your hand, uh, there's no name. Please listen, please try to put your name. It makes no is there. Uh, Galaxy S20. Galaxy. Good question. Okay. Prince Ajib, Adewale JP, what's your question? This point, over that, on it, go TV. So stay tuned because we'll be right back. Prince Ajib, Adewale JP. Hello, Jackie Bong, it's okay. Can you hear me, ma? Okay, uh, Dr. Ekunda, you are- Can you uh, hear me you? now? Can yes, you hear Mr. me? Prince Adewale, let's make it pass. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay, thank you very much, ma. Um, Baba, me, me, le ki yu lo yi bo, e ka le sa e kuro le e bi te wa. E ku jobe ta sa. E se, ori do ba le mu wa sa. Um, question me, it's, uh, it's simple. Now that we know that our 
indigenous religion has been existing before all the foreign religions came about. Baba, what was the reason why the foreign religion are able to overwhelm or to overpower our traditional army, our indigenous religion? Like you rightly said, our indigenous religion are spreading all over the world, but not in Yoruba land. And what is the reason for that, sir? Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Baba, please. Uh, oh, oh, unmute, unmute sir. sir. Unmute, sir. I try to unmute you too. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 muted, sir. Ah, uh, uh, you, sir. Okay. 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 I am mute, sir. Okay. Put it down, Nancy. Ben, sir. It's okay now. Ibaka, Kululi Ayibo. Hmm. Oli ni sebe lowo. Hmm. Hmm. Ibami lo tumbo yi. Where e. It's a book I wrote halfway, which I may complete one day if, if I'm still here with you in the next couple of years. I entitled it, The Age of Ignorance. We are in our age of ignorance as black people. And what happened is because we were enslaved, of all the people who were enslaved, the Yoruba are probably more than any other people who are enslaved. And the rest of us who, are, who escaped slavery, we are colonized, Christianized, Islamized, bastardized. And so we have the effrontery to be saying, oh, tell your father or your mother, don't do that anymore. It's because we are ignorant of our culture, of who we are. The people who do not know who they are, how can they make any progress? You don't know who you are. You are part of the problem. You can solve anybody's problem. Well, so, more, sir. Time in time, and the time is not far. It's, as I told you, I have, in, in, I've been living in the U.S. now for many years. Not only the you have traveled far and wide. The Vatican calls me from time to time. They recognize our religion in the Vatican. There's a world um, par parliament of the world's religions. They represent our religion. It's part of our enslavement that we threw away our own belief system and threw away everything that has to do with it and imbibed and ingested the thought system of other people that are, that are not better than ours. Hook, lie, and sinker. Right. As time goes on, you know, one reason why the future belongs to us, to our religion, is because what Africa has been saying since time Moria is what the rest of the world is now moving toward. All the Orishas I'm talking about are forces of this earth. Thunder, lightning, that is Kabi Isishango, hurricane, 
strong winds. That is all, yeah. Uh, every Orisha represents a force of this world in which we live. And the world is now just beginning to see that the rest of creation, animals, birds, trees, waters, oceans, mountains, they are not created for our own use as human beings to use the way we want. We are part of that creation. You know the, you know, the climate conference in Glasgow, which are just, just winding up. That's where the world is going to recognize all these forces of the earth as important entities that we have to live together with. We have to create space for them in our lives rather than try to exterminate them, try to do away with them. By the time we've cut down all trees thinking that, oh, they are nothing, we've dammed all the rivers, we've <coughs> bulldozed all the mountains, what remains of human beings themselves? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what Thank we have to say about. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay. Um, um one of um uh, the Amoye Yoruba go de um mama omo falabo ada isoyi ka you are on with baba you can ask your question. <coughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> um Professor Wande Abimbala I wish you moki insa. Um, I am sorry I joined a bit late because I had another meeting. Um, and thank you very much for you know your analysis of FIFA and religion. And what I really want to address is the, in part is the question that the last person asked that, why, why were we so ready to embrace other religions to the detriment of our own religion? I think number one uh, is because our own religion is, it's welcoming. Um, like you said, sir, we embrace different, you know, we don't say because of our religion, other religions cannot exist. Whereas the other religions that were brought, introduced Christianity, uh, Islamic religion, and also uh, even Jewish religion, you know, it's just one, the, the God that they have, does not tolerate any other um, God. That's one part. But I think the other part is that is the kind of technology that they brought to us, technology that was quite destructive and created a lot of impression on us. And unfortunately, I think at that time, we were also at war with each other, you know, around the region. So there was also a lot of instability and then plus the destructive technology that the Europeans brought, you know, that helped uh, to suppress our own religion, uh, indigenous religion. And unfortunately it's getting worse and worse. But my one question that I would like to ask is that, you seem to separate um, the culture from the independence of the nation. And personally for me, I think that religion uh, is invented or created by people in order to have an orderly society, to, to have an organized society. Yeah. And from this organization develops 
um, progress, technology, and, and even war, unfortunately. And I think that if we had, or should I ask you that, don't you think that uh, the existence of a Yoruba nation will further promote the progress of our religion as well as catch up what I call catch up technology to develop our own technology, uh, sciences and progress in, in, in our nationhood? Thank you. Very good question. Well, it's, it's up to us. If the leadership of the new Yoruba nation, whenever it uh, comes to fruition, if they have the mindset that uh, we should throw away our indigenous practices and culture, well, we are not going to, we we'll just be like an appendage to other nations, which we are now. But if they can see value in our own indigenous practices and uh, make our, our own culture the center of our life to the extent that people will come from all over the world to come and celebrate us, celebrate our beliefs, celebrate our ancestors, very quickly, the new Yoruba nation will become an important place in the map of the world. So we need to question those people who say they, anybody wants to lead us, where does he stand as far as our culture is concerned? Where does he stand? is very important. Well, the issue of uh, tourism that we just mentioned, that we discussed before, just imagine why we are taking billions of dollars to Saudi Arabia every year or to Jerusalem. Why can't we also create something in Ilefe, in Oyo, in Ijebu, in Ilesha, in Ekiti, all over Yoruba land, that people can come and see and participate in. So that they will not just use us as appendages or to, um, to, to, to like objects that you trade with. If you are so woo, if you are so woo, if you have power. So I, we need to make this an abiding issue with any, anybody when we're right now, even before we go too far, ask all the, where, where do you stand? Do you think uh, Yoruba land is a land of sinners? So everybody must be a Christian? Or everybody must be a Muslim? Or do you think our culture is worth something that we need to carry along in the new Yoruba nation? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Mind you, I don't have anything against Christianity or Islam or whatever, but I've never practiced it. I will, when we are speaking like this, in, in, when I was a child, an old woman will come up and salute Oya. It's in the honor and glory of Ifa, of Oya, of Kabi Esishango, of Ogun. That is where 
I will find my own glory. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Oguleye, Dr. Onke Oguleye, you are on. Eshewuma. Eshewuma, Baba, wa mufiti togotowo kini, mojuba o, ekurole. I just want to first uh, add to what uh, one of the speakers' uh, question was about how come we, re we relegated our own religion, our own culture, and followed the um, colonialists, and also ask a, a question uh, after that. Um, I wanted to say that every culture uh, educates its children in their way. And the colonialist knows this. That's why when they came in, and they did it to Native Americans as well. Mm -hmm. When they came in, they took all the children to boarding school. And that's where they programmed the children on the colonialist tradition, culture, exactly. and religion. And by the time the children grew up after secondary school and came back home, their own uh, ancestral religion, culture, and tradition became foreign to them, and they looked down upon it. Exactly. That's one. Secondly, the colonialist um, system that was established became a system to look forward to, if you, to look up to if you want to progress. So our people could not go to a hospital and get treated unless they proclaim the religion. They could not get certain amenities. They could not get jobs unless they are that religion. Exactly. It happened to me in the North. I grew up in Northern Nigeria. And I had to change my name to a, a Muslim Northern name to mm. even be allowed in the system. But eventually they found out and they threw me out. <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm glad I came back to, to Yoruba land. Uh, but you. this is how it's always been in, in every colonized state. You exactly. want recognition, you want economic viability, you have to be part of that, that, that system. So that's why our parents and grandparents had to turn that way. So it's not that they voluntarily just threw theirs away. But now I'm glad we're all coming back. And this is my question to you, Babawa. Is it possible to now re-educate our children in our own culture and tradition and spirituality through the schools they go to? After all, we have to take Islamic religious knowledge, Bible religious knowledge, why not indigenous religious knowledge as a core course in every school? Then when the child grow, grows up, they can decide which one appeals to them. That's my question, sir. And drive initiative in Thank you very much. Well, the school system is a major factor in what has happened to us. Mm. Because we were mm. miseducated. Mm. Tell me how wonderful it would have been when our late father, Awolowo, who loved us and who we still love, when he started free primary education, before in all those schools, are using if you establish a commission to find a way to use the Yoruba language to teach our children, maybe first of all establish that commission, let them uh, write down the way forward for the first two or three years, and we start the education of our children, teach mathematics in Yoruba, not in English teach chemistry, teach physics, teach everything in the Yoruba language. Early in the morning, our children dance to Bata. They dance to Dodo, they dance to Agogo. We wear our own dresses, embroidered like we do. But they made sure that we did it, the Christian and Islamic evangelists made sure that that didn't happen. So what kind of education did our children receive? Oh, what you are saying happened to you is still happening. If you want certain jobs, you cannot dress like I dress to, to an interview. They say you dress corporate. What is corporate? <laughs> what they mean by corporate is European. 
to dress like a European person. But what nation are we building in which no indigenous language is used for education beyond primary three? In, in some schools, private schools, no indigenous Nigerian language is used at all. Oh, how easy, how wonderful will it be if there are textbooks in mathematics that Professor Adeboye has approved that they, oh, this is written Yoruba. And this is the professor who he was, he was, he was speaking Yoruba because he had to say, oh, okay, I'm sorry that you want me to speak in English. Why is such a person still alive? Why can't we have an education system in which all subjects are taught in the Yoruba language? No African indigenous language is used on the continent of Africa to teach anybody. We are still slaves, whether we want it or not. We are not free. The kind of freedom that we think we have, it's not real freedom. Then your children go to school, they, they can't speak their own language, they can't write in it, they are illiterate in it, they can't wear the dress that all over the world people say, oh, who is this? I go to some countries, they say, oh, are you the king of Africa? Ha, ah, what can I do? I want, can I take a photograph with you? When you wear your bad dress. All these things are going down the drain before our own very eyes. And the intelligentsia are watching, doing nothing, saying nothing. Message of hope. Thank you. Shemole, Shemole, I don't, message of I don't hope. Think, I don't think it is fair to blame everything on uh, the colonial masters of European for the same reason that if we look at it closely, the same experience, the same colonial experience that Nigerians experienced. The Indians too went through it. They were under colonial rule for a long time, but still they took some of the aspect of European that benefits them, like maybe technology. Uh, yeah, in but... terms of their own religion, their own religion <coughs> and their mode of dressing, they refused to give it up. Why? because they still practice their own religion. We, mm -hmm. we are trying to run away from our own indigenous practices. That, that is, is the different. problem. Message of hope. We cannot only, only blame the Europeans. After, after- uh, Who are you going to blame? If they are to be blamed, why not blame them? That's the problem. Uh, message of we cannot hope. continue to blame them forever. We, uh, we have to engage no, in self evaluation. If we have, Parents now who are still proud that their children can speak good English, but they, but they cannot speak Yoruba. There are so many Nigerians there in Nigeria. I'm not that I'm proud of that. Europeans, I am saying, you what can you do yourself? I establish a school. I am not a rich man. I send thousands of dollars home every day. What can you do yourself? That's what exactly. I'm saying. Hey, yes. Please go straight to the question. Go straight to the question. Bye bye, Dr. After that, I'm coming. I get you. Yeah, well, I'm you. Baba, I want to cut it so nipa on a tating back at TV Teman Logbo. Lati ripe oro tan so lale pe o je eyi ti o wo awa yoruba leti dada gbogbo eni lo je oto mo ro pe lara awon bi te ti dinner awana gegebi omode 
actually, Lee Losibe. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to make one or two comments uh, relating to the question asked by <laughs> Adiwale. Uh, it's a very important thing that we need to understand why we have found ourselves in this situation. Uh, unlike in Asia or these other countries where the same foreign religions came and tried to convert people from their own indigenous religion, they didn't have two radically monotheistic traditions called Islam and Christianity. That is a major, major, major factor in what has happened to us. Uh, if you travel to, uh, to Japan or you go to China, even China that says we don't have religion, they are practicing all their stuff. Uh, you find the uh, shrines to Buddhism and, and, and Shinto in the same compound in Japan. They, have, they don't have that kind of problem. And somebody had mentioned uh, India. But Islam and Christianity are two traditions that are totally, totally intolerant of other faiths. And that is one factor that I think happened to us uh, on the continent. It's very interesting that Baba uh, talked about the age of ignorance, the, you know, his, his, his book. And I pray and hope that you will complete that, that book. It, it, sure. Islam used that same term, the Jahiliya era, yeah, which is the yes. age of ignorance. They assumed to be the age of ignorance before Muhammad came on board. And the revolution in Mecca, you know, happened. So that's a factor. Another thing I want to mention is that we must try as much as possible to establish that Yoruba religion, indigenous religion, and all of them do not support occultism. That has become so demonized. And that has become an issue, you know, in how people talk about Yoruba or indigenous tradition. Uh, you know, uh, 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 because this was not practiced, you go to the universities now, some people will get together, they say they are practicing uh, indigenous religion. They are drawing blood and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. That's not, that's not Yoruba religion. That's not African religion. So the, the process of educating the youth, particularly some of these folks in the universities and high schools, I think is absolutely, absolutely important. The third factor, and that's the last I mentioned, is that I want to uh, thank Baba for the initiative he has, he has made in spending his own personal money to, uh, you know, establish um, an EFA school in Oyo and also the center. Now, even if we have to go back to the value system and the knowledge, epistemology, that sustain our people before even we were born, it is worth even trying. And, and I mean, look at what happened when COVID came. COVID came, we didn't have the resources. The West refused to give us or share their resources with us. People went back to the indigenous tradition, particularly the healing system, the herbal, you know, the herbal, uh, 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 the herbal uh, medicine to respond to, you know. And I personally think that that was one of the reasons why we were able to fight COVID. If you look at uh, things they would never take before, if you if you if, if you if you drink uh, don't go yarrow, don't go yarrow is like it's like uh, it's like uh, chloroquine, you know. And people have confirmed in the West that there is there is there is there is a benefit in going back to these types of sources of knowledge and the practice of medicine and uh, so. We should appeal to our university experts. We should appeal to those doing medicine. We should appeal to those in pharmacy that there Thank is strength you, in this tradition. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Professor Adebayi. Hello. Hello, Mr. Lonki. Aburo, how are you? Bad, sir. Nice to hear your voice. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, but I can't see. Uh, 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 Baba Adebayi, at the time, I'm going to come out me too. The first thing to move first, so only pay by me a man baggy. Pay who be okay. I'm back to <laughs> sometimes we forget 
that for 300 years, we were uh, taken as slaves to uh, the Americas, among other places. And that it was a Christian priest, Father Las Casas, who pointed the way to the Holy Roman Empire that was suitable for slavery. And when you are talking about West Africa in particular, but all of Africa in general, as being susceptible to the forces of the, Roman, of the Holy Roman Empire, we were, we were scattered, we were dominated for 300 years by the forces of arms before any notion of Christianity was, or it came to us. Meanwhile, from the other side, the Arab slave trade that started in the 1800s and took our people to the port of Basra had already weakened us before the Europeans came. So that when we are talking about comparing our reactions to Asia, we are, we are, we are wrong. Because Asians were not massively <laughs> enslaved and abused for years yeah. and made to doubt themselves, to lose confidence in, their, in themselves exactly. when they were colonized. So our acceptance of Christianity and Islam was by force. And by, um, after more than two or three generations, we were already psychological slaves. Fortunately though, message of hope, not all is lost. Uh, we came back, we were born into this thing, we have brains and we didn't get completely lobotomized. So I met uh, Dr. Lupono at Oshobo. I don't know if you remember. I went there by, uh, because uh, Governor Alec Beshola asked me, like the government of Alec Beshola asked me to come and retrain mathematics teachers in Osho State. I went there and I decided that retraining high school mathematics teachers, I had to do it in Yoruba. That I had to bring all the mathematics that is resident in Yoruba culture. I call it pump, primary underutilized pump in Yoruba culture. And the, student, the, the students, that is the teachers, challenged me. I want supervisors, well, the Jeka Kawa money, mathematics, they did Yoruba. Whereupon they didn't know that many of the people in the audience, about eight of them out of about 70, were supervisors. One of them jumped up and says, In country professor by the Keshe, Olemashi. In other words, even in, 19, in 2013, it was clear to the supervisors that mathematics for high school, the way I wanted people to do it, was far more understandable than the way we have been doing before with CV Durell and what have you. So there is hope. Let's Thank not you. let the past keep us tied down. Let's look forward about what we can do. And that's why Professor uh, Abibola said, or war, our intelligentsia, whether we are locus, we have a responsibility to take things from where we found them and move forward uh, we are not going to spend too much time regretting the past, no matter how much we didn't contribute to it. We should look forward into the future, look at our own energy, our own power, our own intellection, and use them to reshape the land and to cure ourselves. If Thank I knew, you. Thank you. Thank you. All I'm taking now is questions because I don't want people to go. I, we need to let Baba go and rest. So I'm taking only a few questions. If it is not questions, please, uh, let's leave the commentary for now. I don't want people to go away having the question in their mind when other people will just, uh, you know, that are a lot of uh, commentary that are very, very good. I thank them for that. But now let's limit it to one question. And then in five minutes, we are going to let Baba go, please. Yes. Bameto. I think my question goes to in which way can Professor one day assist in getting this thing across? Well, let's have this curriculum teaching Yoruba in probably from primary school to whatever. So we can influence one. I mean, maybe you can use this influence to get to all those ministers of education from different states to introduce this to them. Is there a way? That thing can be achieved. Hello? I don't think so. At okay. present. 
the way Nigeria is politically, um, I don't think there's anybody who has that kind of influence. Um, but we still have to continue to fight for it. But um, unless and until we are ready to use our own languages, like Yoruba, Yoruba language is probably the second or third language of Africa that has been used uh, to write novels, to, it, the, we have weekly magazines, we have monthly magazines. The, the language is a very populous language and it's been used. The only other language that may be used more is Arabic and probably Swahili. Both are not indigenous to Africa as such. We have to find a way to train our children to teach them in our indigenous languages. We are not alone in that. The whole of tropical Africa is in that we have the, the same problem. Our own situation may even be better than the situation of a place like Benin Republic. There are so many countries of Africa where no African language is used at all. Just imagine the insult. Portugal. I don't think the population of Portugal is more than 15 million. The land mass of Portugal may be less than to your state, than that, than that of your state. They conquered the whole of Brazil, introduced their religion there, and their language. Brazil is slightly more than half of the South American continent. In Africa, there are four huge countries where people speak Portuguese and they use Portuguese in, in school. Slavery and colonialism has not ended. No. If you really think you are an intellectual, at least you can free yourself. If you cannot, you don't have the ability to free the masses. First of all, free yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, so, um, 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 Alagba, and that is what we are I telling them. Your, if you, your children are not speaking Yoruba in the house. So, <laughs> how are you going to free yourself? Alagba, Tuji, at the one question, just one question. Kalesa, Kalesa, um, <laughs> so we are speaking English because there are many people that doesn't that don't speak Yoruba. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Baba, you look so go straight to the question. Baba, you look, you look confused me. I'm sorry. Well, you feel that day. Um, sir. Um, <laughs> Baba, Baba, be more lassa. Um, first of all, there is a any there's somebody that said I should send greetings to you, sir. Dokita Adeleke Atewalugu. One key marking, yes, sir. Ah, I buy me two. Yes, sir. One egg bat here, JVC, pound what the lecture, um, lecture for you by a round lower gong by. I know, let's go. Okay. Mm. All right, sir. Um, Nick Batimo in secondary school, sir. English. When I was in secondary school, all level physics. I did O level when I was in form four physics. And my my, 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 my principal at that time was saying, if they, ah, don't you think you will have got more marks if this physics is is if this exam is in is in Yoruba? Money but 
physics ni yoba so ba wa la je fresh exam ni yoba o wa ni gba ta wa de for abe college yo pe iwe ti baba crowder ko la won fi se i mean the book that was written by ajay crowder in yoruba that they studied it extensively that my principal ji adeju may so rest in peace when we were doing all this there is a possibility sir is it is there a possibility that all these all these things all these subjects will be taught in yoruba at a point you pay so that when baba de boy went to like oshobo to say okay you know i want better see she come and learn this and teach it in yoruba why kini wa e ki fe se sir on several occasions sir won so wi pe wa e ki pe won le fun wa ni they cannot say anything because it's a west african stuff right but in je awon eyan to ba pass in to ba to fail english the people that failed english but have a1 in economics yeah people failed english but have a1 credit in government and history how come sir that we have to pass english before you, and before you can enter into any of our universities or into medical med, med, medical field or pharmacy especially where we can put don't go yaro together to become the backbone thank you sir when i was vice chancellor in nife at that time we had four hospitals where we train doctors and nurses and we had a department which was part of the faculty of pharmacy where we use herbs and leaves to manufacture chloroquine there are two there were two medicines chloroquine i have forgotten the other one chloroquine sir yes all those medicines we don't buy from anywhere we manufacture our own mm. and we use them in all our four hospitals right there are lots that we can do uh, to um, make life better for ourselves and for our own people and for especially for our own children and children yet unborn we cannot continue in this slavery for forever mm -hmm. the slavery that has engulfed us the ignorance that has engulfed all of us is not limited to uh, politics everywhere that you turn the african is in chains we can free ourselves as intellectuals we can be shiny examples to generations yet unborn that's what that's what i try to make myself and i have not seen no policeman has arrested me as a result <laughs> <laughs> thank you baba ah alagba isaac adeyemi let's go straight to the question 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 one question just one question because our time is fast spent please unmute yourself and ask one question i think ge gbogbo eku ekun ayo nko e ti gbagbe ah okay mi 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 oni gbagbe ni mo mo pe ti wa nbe yen for a while uh, thank you ma'am uh, thank you sir uh, for explaining everything you have explained to us tonight let's go to the question please i am going there ma'am uh the question is uh we some some of some people go to pastors or imam because of their appearance uh is there a specific uh way that babalawos ought to appear that will be appealing to people that will approach them for divine inspiration because the concept of babalawo is rather fearful the way they look wretched you know i'm not using blanket something is there something a criteria or a criterion as to 
how they appear so that you know it can be appealing to people okay. to approach them. Where okay, do you live? You. Yeah. Do you live in Nigeria? Uh for almost 50 you no know, 40 years before I relocated. <laughs> You've been living outside of Nigeria for about 40 years. <laughs> No, no, no. I've lived, I lived in Nigeria for about 40 years before oh, I moved. okay. How but long have you been outside very Nigeria? Very well, today. Thank <laughs> you. That's not part of the problem. <laughs> you dress very, very well. It's not part of the problem at all. Today, many of them... Oh, the children that we taught that at the IFA Heritage Institute, every year when we have graduation ceremonies, the last one, more than 10 of them came with cars that they have. People dress very well. That's not an issue anymore. Thank you, sir. And not only that they dress very well, I've not encountered a babalawo who will be wearing coat and tie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not part of the issue we are talking about. That may be an might have been an issue a long time ago, like 30, 40, 50 years ago, but not anymore. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, 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 Dr. Ekunda, one question, quick. Ask your question. I question <laughs> In Cocotim of a berry, Nick Bay, Kinin or the Lori, Oria, to remarry, you want a kinny Nick Bay, Kinny, it to more Uruko, into the Amoque, Uruko, Bubu, Nino, and Uruko, you by one need to more. Kinny to more Uruko, Tonk when you do to marry. A cagey, Nibupe, Imbati, a ban sorrow, ye, Gagabeshe, a la ye, or no at ye. Di ni 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 de isi to je pe ede 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 awon awon temi pe ni neanderthals o la nso bawo ni a se le ni oye ede wa pelu iru awon kan be yen bi eh nitori pe be se be se be se so yen ta ba soro ni science ati gbugbu awon orun kan be I'm also with physicality, but it's okay. Shango at Shango Olukoso. A pokey. Well, you look married, no one young or no toki. I want a one alasheku, no one ni or tea sale. Tabele, we are belen. Check is a physicality, Lenry, Lenry fasting. Two other jacques physicality. A one iti em a to. To, to spiritual, but you know, just physicality. Ikini, Ikeji, Iketani, eh, Kini, Yato Lani, Essie, at your sin. Kidney, ni dear, to fly a jacque, I want to be you a eh, funny religion, Nikon. Tio, she will if I call Jari, John, to return Buffalo, Tio Buff, Tio Banway Wilson, to buy Lossibe, to buy Tomba Funicon, Tomba Kaibof, to buy she, Araya. Check is a profession rather than religion. Christian evangelist. What has Olodu Mari got to do with Bobo? Then he can't. What is wrong with it? Tell it. 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 Kini dear to be Kini got to Jackia for our cabaret, change our policies here. Could you wait? I want Babala who want my bona fide at Tunisia, want your bona fide faculty. Ni I want Ibiki BT, I want Ile, I want Kini Wabawa, I want schools. Wa could any get a share in the Latin primary school? Ni could any day a day Yoruba ni country? I look, I look, Yoruba. Like Jack, we are need more and I call or if I see me. Ah, limbo, ah, limbo, idea, dada. Man. 
Last part, the first part, physicality of the new I don't know what that means. But let me answer the last part. That's what I'm saying. All of us can do something. There's something we can do. There's something that uh, the Nigerian government can do. But if they reduce, when they refuse to establish uh, IFA Heritage Institute that UNESCO had approved, and they assigned that they would do, and they allocated money, which was never disbursed, I stepped up and established something, and it's still going on. What we need to, uh, if we can debate until doomsday, if the intelligentsia, people who went to school, or who have, have the capacity to understand what we are talking about, unless we know and agree that this is something important, we have to do something about it. Nothing will ever happen. How many conferences have we all attended about things like this? It doesn't lead to anything. It will begin to lead to something when we feel concerned about it and we do something at personal level or within your own sphere of influence. And uh, probably if we all work together, we can have a Yoruba state in future in the near future, maybe, where we can decree that all our children must be taught in the Yoruba language. If I must be a subject, or oh, we need to uh, put our culture on the pedestal. All these things we have to do. And I hope and pray that th those changes will come. But, uh, Justice delayed is justice denied. It's getting, it's taking too long. Let us hope and pray that if we all of us work together, things will begin to change in our own time. Then, uh, uh, Sister Shola, Sister Shola, can I quickly interject? I, I want to, to say welcome. something that my dad you know, add something yes, yes, that uh, 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 the Yoruba uh, is not only a religion, it's a world view. We have dance, we have drama, we have medicine. There are so many aspects to the uh, Yoruba way of life, the Yoruba indigenous way of life, because I think that is one of the questions you asked that, why did we say it is only religion? It is not only religion. It encompasses so many other, um, it's a complete worldview. Daddy, am I correct? Yes, of course. You are not correct. You are All right. Uh -huh. So, and then also, when I was in University of Bife, I did Yoruba when I left, but I went back to do law. But during the period that I was in the university, we had three Babala, uh, two Babalawos. Awofatogu, I forgot the other name of the Babalawo. They were actually three, but two were teaching me in my class. And Yoruba, all you had to do was to pass Yoruba. You didn't need English to get into that department during yeah. the time that my father was the head of department was when they changed it. So I, I don't know if that is what they are still doing, but I believe that they are still following in that direction. You know that soon after I left, they don't have that anymore. That the intelligentsia, we are the culprit. We are the culprit. People have capacity to understand some influence to make changes, but we are doing nothing about it. We, before our own very eyes, our own culture is disappearing and we are doing nothing. So 
he also asked about the difference between all sin and a sin. I don't I don't know. I, mean, I won't go into something I don't know. I don't know what all sin oh, and yes. sin means. Maybe some other time if you can call me, maybe you can talk. We don't have time for that. Mm. Okay. All right. Um maybe uh Baba oh you are going to be a good lato to my king ballet. Uh, you, uh, any other you, person, please test your question. Okay, Baba, let's do it fast. We need to show Baba, uh, every time. Question, question, question. Yeah, uh, in continuous sonny pa, a colle way, ni Baba to sort out bag ba or relay day. Oh, you don't need to be a monte or ball, you but yeah, question, we, we, we don't know. have a Yoruba nation. There's no way that the, uh, the other the Nigeria will. Okay, what is your so, question, Professor? You will we'll have. Uh, please. Yeah, please wait a minute. Now, the the question that I have is related to Ifa, which is being used to select all bus. There are a lot of uh, what Baba use a, a word for them, those uh, 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 fraudulent bubbles, who are now the one they are calling to towns to come and help select Oba. Uh, my father was very vast in Ifa. He was actually of it in our district. And, and he used to tell us, Ifa o ki mole, Ifa man wajo waju, Samba fe joba, I lost the question. The question me one, honey. Tamba fe joba ni le yoruba. I want, I want ni fatin te wa hala le kupo. Ni fale shopu te ni famu. Elo itasu pe ni akon ni famu. Ba ola se le shi ani ni ke a want ni famu da wa hala le. Ati jo want ni famu wo wo jo waju. Okay. Eni tiba ibu fati ma dara obi fati eti mari. I offer you could left one for by the Colonel Moore. But if to refer back to Sobi or your wife, you can push a marry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Baba Dauke. Well, the, you, anybody can speculate and contribute, you know, to what you are asking. I don't know. Uh, there's no doubt at all that. If there is any community where they are still using Ifa to select uh, an Oba, I, I do, if they are doing that, the, the, all those things have changed. They may pretend to be doing it while the candidates would uh, use money or some other influence. Exactly. Right. Exactly. We need to, if we, our yeah, ancestors, our, our, our ancestors have left a legacy for us, which is enough for all Yoruba people to share. But unfortunately, we are bastardizing that legacy. Some have even thrown it away that it doesn't, uh, you don't need it anymore in the modern world. Yeah. And we are not a, a small or infinitesimal number of people in the world. I started with that. People who call themselves Yoruba in the world are more than 100 million. So it's up to you, intellectuals. People call themselves professors, medical doctors, lawyers, intelligentsia in the army, in commerce and industry. We have them. But what are, are we going to continue to let our culture go down the drain? That's, that's my message. We, we need to do something. If you can do something for yourself and your family, 
that's something you, you've done something. Uh, before we go, there is a university of Ifa now established. Are, are you still there? Yeah, yeah we're here. We're here. We're here, sir. Right. Uh, my son, Kolapo, Abimbola just established a university approved by the American government where they will, the, the courses have even started. The course on IFA, they take a degree in it. Mm. There's another course on Urisha. They take a degree in it. There is a third course on Yoruba medicine at degree level. That's something. Yeah, he's doing something in that direction. Maybe there's something you also can do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I didn't I I we tried to call you in, but you didn't talk. Ah, no, no. You, uh, you, you just put your name there. Your name wasn't there, it was your phone. Uh, okay. I asked you, ask your one question and okay. then we go. Okay. okay. I, Ask one question and that will be it. Yeah. Only one question. Baba, I wish I forgot one. I forgot what I No, people are glorying it, Baba. I want to turn the bobo. What is your question? I buried it. I want to be Baba. I pull a leash. If you want to go, Baba, I want to see my dick back. Bo, let the body lead the way. Bada. You know, you share with the leash. If you want, I buried in all the ring. That my dick can't go. Because we have done our course in the Bahasa. I don't know if anybody has that clout. <laughs> <laughs> I do have that clout, certainly. Um, some of the so-called robbers are part of the problem. Mm. So problem what we are talking about, solution. if you ask a Oba who has converted Coke lion same kind to Islam. We will say you are talking nonsense. So I am talking to intelligentsia, not to all bars. Mm. I, I think you are the people who can make a difference. Thank you. So we have learned a lot today. I am very, very grateful to my Baba, our Baba, I wish her Bobo Agbaye, Baba Wa, Ojogban one day, Abimbola, for uh, almost four hours. So you along, we have really, really learned a lot from Baba. And uh, the next time when we meet them, I don't know when that will be. We are, Baba is going to be um, talking to us about the belief in Ajay and Elirium by the grace of God, when that time comes. I don't know how to thank Baba for all he has been doing, not on this program alone, but all the time for promotion of Yoruba culture all over the world. It is true, Baba, that Yoruba culture and religion are known all over the world. And my prayer is, Emi Baba Wagu, Lori Alafia, Ati for Kabaleti, Olon Ti Jogun so I am um, also taking this opportunity to thank everybody that has been here for all this time. They are Moye Yoruba and all other people that have uh, participated in this. I'm very grateful to my own dear sister, uh, Ola BC, uh, BK, Bere Baba. I'm very, very grateful. I'm going to be cutting it short here so we can go. Um, I'm very, very grateful. Modupa o baba mi o kumulero maja leka. Amaina o gora kona kaju e so mi o mi o gora kona kaju e so mi o mi o gora. Who is that? Tani Bashaje o viti solero. Where is that coming from? I'm very, very grateful. Uh, by the grace of God, we are going to have you. 
Baba ya ma be o be ni be shu a be ni be ri o lori a tele se mwa a be na. E o ma lò, e o ma bò, e o ni mo di shè kwe nyo. To ba ni e ma bò, le o ni de van le, mo du kwe o baba mi. Next week we are going to meet again on Yoruba Gode. Thank you everybody. Adele Bari and in Akure. All our people who love Yoruba culture, uh, we appreciate your presence here. Please visit us often on your Bagu Day. We do have English uh, spoken program, so do visit us. The number doesn't change. By the grace of God, we are going to meet next week. Baba, Kepo. Well, Ah, E mi na won fi je awise ifa. Ko ni akara kara ni yagba. Olobo lo nbo omi tagi. Le mi fa fun orun mi la. Le mi. Won ni arun ti se fa lese tun de. Orun mi la ni bo ba le de ko de. Ti fa larun esin o le so un. Orun mi la larun esin o le po un. You could you Baba, <laughs> 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 <laughs>